for Tennessee, who focused on a running attack led by Reggie Cobb and won their first five games. But Cobb is gone, and freshman Chuck Webb hasn't missed a beat as his replacement. Johnny Majors has made his share of major decisions this year. First, he suspended Cobb, then he changed quarterbacks. Sterling Hinton went to the bench, and Andy Kelly now engineers a more balanced offense that has averaged 43 points a game over the last three. Without Cobb and Hinton, Webb has found greater success as an independent volunteer. He has spun off 175 yards a game on the ground since entering the starting lineup a month ago. He might be all the eighth-ranked balls need for a win that would dress them in 100% cotton for a New Year's Day trip to Big D. Jerry Claiborne's cats hope to spoil the volunteer party on New Year's Day. He, too, had visions of a bowl, but they died with each conference loss. Today, Kentucky plays the spoiler, and Alfred Rawls could be the biggest party pooper of them all with his big play potential. Oliver Barnett leads the Big Blue Defensive as Tennessee meets Kentucky next. Welcome to my old Kentucky home for college football Saturday. It's the Bluegrass here in the Commonwealth, and today the Kentucky Wildcats play host to the Volunteers of Tennessee. We're live. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to College Football Saturday CFA Style. I'm Tim Brando. Today, we're going to show you one of the great turnaround teams in all of college football. 0-6 oh, a year ago, Johnny Majors made the necessary changes, wound up 5-6. and six. Now, Mr. November has taken his team all the way to a possibility of an... SEC championship. Look at that. Four and one in conference play. And if Auburn were to beat Alabama at Jordan Hare next week, he would have a share of the Southeastern Conference title. And it's not out of the question that they could still enter into the Sugar Bowl situation if Auburn were to beat Alabama by a significant margin. Joining me as always is the legendary Georgia coach Vince Dooley. And you've been around a long time, coach. I have to ask you. How big a difference is it when you're coaching for a share of the conference title versus the whole banana? Well, what you play for every year is a championship. Obviously, you'd rather win it outright, but on the other hand, sharing it ain't bad. <laughs> As a matter of fact, if Tennessee wins today and it falls into place, then they would have earned the right to wear the mantle of a champion, and that's the goal of every football team. Now, Tennessee's lone loss was to Alabama in Birmingham, but I know something happened in that game, Vince, that really caught your eye. Well, late in the first quarter, Coach Johnny Majors made a decision to change quarterbacks. He put in his number two quarterback, Andy Kelly, and Andy Kelly responded by putting 30 points on the board in three quarters. Look at those numbers on Andy Kelly. What he gives is the offense versatility. He complements that strong running game with a sound, effective passing game, utilizing those great receivers. Since Kelly has been the quarterback, Tennessee has averaged 40 points a game. Yeah, but it's the running game that's the base, and the reason it's such a great base is the massive size of that offensive line. Well, Tennessee line has all the tools of greatness. They are big, they are quick, they are dry. Look at those Tennessee people, linemen. They are, and they have drive and determination, and they're intelligent. I've been watching offensive lines, Timmy, in the SEC <laughs> as a player and a coach for 38 years, and this offensive line ranks with some of the very best that I have ever seen, including a couple of good ones at Georgia. Now, Kentucky's not going to a bowl, but winning seven games would be very important for Jerry Claiborne, wouldn't it? Well, there's a lot of great rivalries in college football, and a lot of people don't realize that there's a great one right here. Yeah. It spans 96 years, 85 football games, and it's sort of a border rivalry. Coach Claiborne and the Kentucky team says this is their bowl game. What they'd love to do is spoil Tennessee's season right at the end, win seven games, which would be quite an accomplishment considering the tough schedule. That's three SEC teams in the top ten, and also when you consider that they've had to endure an unbelievable amount of injury. And we'll be documenting that a bit later. So, will it be Rocky Top in my old Kentucky home? We'll soon find out. College football, Tennessee and Kentucky, brought to you by Mr. Goodrich. 
Goodrich. Mr. Goodrich knows it's not just a car, it's your freedom. By microwave computer systems for your business. And by the Principal Financial Group, financial products that give you an edge. Who has the edge in this border rivalry down in the Southeastern Conference? Stay with us, we'll find out. Kentucky won the toss and deferred. They will kick off to Tennessee. Anthony Morgan is back deep along with Carl Pickens. It's Morgan at his 13. Down at the 28-yard line and your road handler lineups for Tennessee. Andy Kelly will be at quarterback. Behind him, Webb and Roland pulls the fullback. The split end is Thomas Woods. Alvin Harper is the wingback. The tight end, Mark Adams, a great blocker. And up front, John Fisher at center. He'll be flanked by the guards, Tom Maslinski and Eric Still, the All-American. And the tackles are Charles McRae and Anton Davis. First and ten balls from their 27-yard line just underway. Webb, he gets three up to the 30-yard line. The Kentucky defense, the wide tackle six, Jerry Bell and Joey Couch are the defensive guards. The tackles, Oliver Barnett and Doug Hauser. The linebackers outside, Jeff Brady and Tony Massey. And in the middle, Craig Benzinger along with Billy Swanson, the inside backers. Albert Burks and Chris Tolbert are the corners in the free safety. Ron Robinson, and he'll rove all over the place in that defensive perimeter. Chuck Webb again and only two yards. And that's what that defensive front is all about. The wide tackle six. Jerry Bell made the stop along with 79 Oliver Barnett. Well, it appears that Tennessee is going to come out and try to establish the running game. Barnett, however, has got some other minds. And if this guy is ready to play, and Barnett is ready to play, it appears right now, number 79, he can take on any block as he did then and make the play. Third down. A passing situation, and they run out of the eye. Play fake. And they look for the tight end, Adams, and they've got the first down at the 49-yard line. Ron Robinson, number 26, the senior from Nashville, Tennessee, the free safety, made the stop after an 18-yard game. This is what Kelly gives them, that versatility in the passing game. Play action fake off the waggle, and then always the tight end dragging across. In this case, Mark Adams, very versatile tight end, makes the tackle, and Robinson made the first of what you're going to see as many tackles. Their safety man, number 26 for Kentucky. And Webb slants off the left side, and there to greet him in a hurry. Billy Swanson out of Paducah, Kentucky. An inside linebacker who had 17 tackles and a game-saving interception against LSU a few weeks back. He's been the, he's been the most consistent football player, and here's Johnny Majors, uh, who next year is going to be the president of the Coaches Association, and what a record he's had over a period of time at Tennessee, at Pittsburgh, and at Iowa State. 22 years overall, 13 with Tennessee. And they flare it out for the fullback pulls, and it's incomplete. And the weather will be a factor today. Tennessee getting the ball after Kentucky deferred because of wind. You see the wind will gust up to 31 miles per hour. The temperature 55. It will drop, of course, as we get closer to the prime time hours. And wind is always a factor here at Commonwealth Stadium. Vince. It has through the years. And I've been here a lot of times at night when it was blowing hard. But did you see Oliver Barnett put the pressure on Kelly? Looks like he has come to play. Well, the Volunteers are a team that do not like to be in third and long situations. And you see they're converging 48% of the time through the course of this season. A deep pattern is incomplete, but Harper was there. Alvin Harper was by at least three steps beyond Ron Robinson. The pass a bit overthrown. This Halvin Harper is quite an athlete, 6'4", 200, and he can fly, and there he is right down the middle, a great target. But Andy Kelly overthrew that great target. He's got an arm reach, height, he's got it all. And a great high jumper, won the, led the SEC. Elmore punts it down, and it will be down by the Volunteers at the two-yard line. And that's where the Kentucky offense takes over. Freddie Maggard will be at quarterback. Behind him, Alfred Rawls. Listen for him. Andy Murray, the fullback. 
The split end is John Bolden, Steve Phillips, the possession receiver. Rodney Jackson, a quality tight end. And up front for the Wildcats, David Crane at center. The guards are Todd Perry and Joel Mazzella. And the tackles, Greg Lahr and Mike Pfeiffer. Well, they spot it now at the five-yard line rather than the two. First and ten, Kentucky. Rawls and nothing doing. Chazon Bradley made the stop, and the rest of that volunteer defensive front, Marion Hobby and Tracy Hayworth, are the defensive ends. The tackles, Mark Moore and Martin Williams. The linebackers, two outstanding athletes, Daryl Hardy and Ernest Phils, and Chazon Bradley is the middle linebacker. The corners are Preston Warren and J.J. McCleskey, a freshman that will be tested in Kelly Days. And yes, Carl Pickens, who plays both offensively and defensively, is the safety. And on second and ten, a yard or two for Rawls, and that's all up to the seven-yard line. And again, Shazon Bradley making the stop. We talked about the big uh, Tennessee offensive line, but Kentucky's offensive line is big, too. They're huge, particularly Mike uh, Pfeiffer, who is 6'7", 305, their right tackle. You see the holding call made by referee William Goss out of the Southeastern Conference. As you look at Jerry Claiborne, 6-4 and four this year, 2-4 and four in the conference, but as you mentioned, Vince, three top 10 teams in the SEC he had to play, and his eighth season at Kentucky... Overall, the man has been consistent with five and six win years. This would be a real leap for him to come up with a seventh victory in 1989. Well, it would be great for Kentucky. There's the uh, call. This refuse. So I see obviously the right decision. Setting up a third and ten now for Kentucky. Maggard. Incomplete, intended for Phil Logan, the flanker. Carl Pickens was over there in coverage along with J.J. McCleskey as they test that freshman, number six, who's been pressed into duty as a starter. Jerry Claiborne's going to do that throughout the course of this day. They're going to have to throw the ball a lot in the middle, Tim. In that case, they threw it outside, which is fine, but most of the time, they're going to have to throw in the middle, inside those and behind and in front of those linebackers and in front of Pickens and McCleskey, the two freshmen. Hawk will punt it away. Thomas Woods back deep. A high punt and a fair catch called for at the Wildcat 48-yard line. A 40-yard punt. 11-23 remaining opening quarter down here in the SEC. There's something elemental in us all. A basic need to seek out for ourselves a quiet place. Oshkosh now makes clothing for that search. Clothing that brings together the soul of both nature and man. Rugged, comfortable, enduring. Celebrate your natural instincts in Oshkosh sportswear. Now available at Sears. ESPN's College Football Saturday, Tennessee and Kentucky, brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? And by Budweiser, Beachwood Age for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. With Vince Dooley, I'm Tim Brando, welcoming you back to Commonwealth Stadium. And the Cats are on the defensive now as Tennessee opens up in Wildcat territory. This is their second series. And there goes Webb. Breaking tackle after tackle. Down to the 30-yard line where Tony Zygmunt, the outside linebacker, made the stop a 17-yard gain. Well, we talked about the offensive line, and part of it is number 42, Poles, or rather Amsler, number 47, who's 230. Poles is about 250, and that's a part of their offensive line, Tim, as he blocked on the linebacker. Hamsler still in the game, has that up back. And there goes Webb again. He gets a couple of yards before Billy Swanson, the junior from Paducah, made the tackle. Well, this is a Tennessee team. Boy, you think about the great Tennessee offenses in the last 10 years, and they've all had the passing game, and now suddenly they're doing it on the ground. Second and six coming up. Webb behind Amsler. That's a first down. 
inside the 15, down to the 13. Albert Burks made the stop after another 14-yard pickup. Chuck Webb continues to get good blocking from the fullback, Amsler, who blocks out a man right there. He cuts back inside, and Chuck Webb has just been amazing. 175-yard average since he's been a starter. First and 10, Tennessee. Oh, came with the blitz, but they really didn't need to because Oliver Barnett was there in a hurry. Guys, this guy is quick and he is big. He's about 296-3 and he can run and he's quick. And there was a little stunt there and what a play he made. Amsler was lucky to hold on to the football. That's where you get a lot of fumbles with that kind of play, hitting people at the line of scrimmage. First carry for anyone other than Webb in Tennessee's backfield and it goes for minus yardage. Now they give it to Webb this time. Cuts it back inside. Doug Hauser from behind and Billy Swanson converge on the stop. Doug Hauser, number 99, the senior from Aliquippa, Pennsylvania. Plays with outstanding technique, according to defensive coordinator Terry Strzok, a down lineman coach for Jerry Claiborne's club. And defensive coordinator. He's been with Jerry about eight years at Kentucky and ten years at Maryland. And a good one. Third down and eight. And the fans are on their feet here in Kentucky. They adjust Harper, number 81, as he goes into a pass pattern. And they look for him, and he's open. Out of bounds. On the end line, it will not count. They may have audibled into this pass pattern. Well, they've got him spread out, and it's a game of inches. And he put the ball up high where only Harper with that great height can reach it. He's there, but he comes down just outside, just a little bit too high. So it'll be a field goal try now for the Volunteers. Harper is certainly lobbying. Greg Burke will now try. Nine out of ten this year, as long as 49. This one just 29 yards. And Tennessee... Takes the 3-0 lead, and you can credit field position and one good carry by Chuck Webb to set up the three. Well, here's another look at it. Let's see if he was in bounds. Swanson made him throw the ball higher. Let's see. He comes down. Uh, one foot. One looks foot. Looks like that one foot was in, but the, the first foot may have come out of bounds first. Stay with us. Greg Burke will now kick off for Tennessee. They lead by three, 8.35 remaining in the opening quarter. The Volunteers 8-1 overall, trying to remain in the Southeastern Conference hunt. And it's a swift kick that's fumbled and recovered by Tennessee. Steve Phillips fumbled at the up back, and the Volunteers strike in a hurry. There is number 25. He couldn't find the handle. Here's the squib, and it just bounces off the Kentucky man, and Tennessee was right there. I don't think they anticipated this happening, but uh, what a great uh, break for Tennessee early. Wes Lowe made the recovery number two in the white jersey, and the Volunteers now have it at Kentucky's 38. Webb with a 35-yard line. Jerry Bell made the stop. Other scores today. Michigan on their way to Pasadena with that 10-point win. Illinois beating Northwestern also in the Big Ten. Georgia Tech beating B.C. They get Georgia in that big game in Atlanta coming oh, up next going to be a tough one, too. Purdue and Indiana, 15-14. to 14. That game's still in the fourth. Play fake to Webb. And the deep pattern is thrown. And it's knocked down. Intercepted by Tolbert. And ruined an incompleted pass, though. He was out of bounds. He knocked it away defensively and appeared for the moment that he may have had the interception, Vince. Here it is right here. Chris Tolbert, excellent position. Oof. Let's see. 
Oh, my goodness. I thought his knee went down as his foot went down. Tough call. The official was right there, though. I don't know. Might have been an interception. Thomas Woods was the intended receiver. Pass was under throw. Third and eight. They dump it. Amsler couldn't find it. Kentucky nearly got it on the tip drill, so the Wildcat defense responds after the turnover on the kick. Well, that was the key early after scoring the field goal and then getting the ball back in good field position. Vince, I believe they're going for it on fourth and eight. Kentucky's defense was coming off the field. Now they're having to hurry back as their special teams had already made it out there. And now Johnny uh, Majors realizes that he'll have to call the timeout. He wanted to do it in a hurry, is what Johnny probably says, mm -hmm. and it's uh, just too slow. I don't know. I think he might change his mind now. Well, remember, field position is what brought forth the three points because they were able to bury Kentucky inside the five, and they got it on the plus side of the field at the 48-yard line before getting the field goal to make it a 3 nothing game. So they could give up field position. Well, Chuck Webb already having an outstanding game and certainly his season. Look at that. In the first five games, remember Reggie Cobb was playing at that time. He had 346 yards. Cobb had 616 upon his suspension. So they were both headed for 1,000-yard seasons, but look what he's done since Reggie left. Well, when he suspended Cobb, I really felt like that this wouldn't hurt Tennessee because I knew about Chuck Webb. Now they're changing it. Man, I believe that Johnny said, wait a minute, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. I'm from Tennessee, and this is the way we played football there for a long, long yeah. time. I think Johnny felt like if we could get out there, surprise them quick, get them quick, we'd go ahead and do it. Catch but them it while they were celebrating. Webb, by the way, has 45 yards so far today. And again, Elmore punts it inside the five. This time does not get the help of the bounce, and the Wildcats will start from their 20-yard line. A 36-yard punt by Elmore. Three-nothing our score. Let's get you to Bob Carpenter. All right, Bob, so a bit of an ugly scene at the end of that one. And by the way, Penn State is holiday bowl bound, apparently, against BYU. And Vince and I will be there for that in the latter part of December. That's a completion to the tight end. Rodney Jackson on first down by Maggard. Kelly Days made the stop for Tennessee. An 18-yard pickup. What a great job by Maggard coming back inside the block of the pulling guard and then finding Jackson open. Just an excellent play that a lot of times you don't see sophomores or juniors be able to do that kind of situation. And uh, he is just a sophomore. Made a great play, I thought. You see his numbers. And those interceptions, that's deceiving. There have been a lot of tip passes and drop potential touchdown passes for Maggard. And that's nearly another first down to Phil Logan. We have a marker down in the Kentucky backfield. A pickup of eight. Carl Pickens made the stop. And it will be a holding call against Kentucky. Well, that's two. And Kentucky, if they're going to win this football game, can't have a lot of penalties. they got to play a very clean football game. This has been a hard luck year for Maggard as well as Jerry Claiborne. When you consider two or three plays could be the difference between eight and three or six and five. Here's the call. It's holding. But the offensive mind that we spoke with that's been on Jerry's staff, Jerry Eisenman, told us that Maggard has really done a fine job. He's got a great future, but there have been many drop passes, five of them for touchdowns. As a matter of fact, 24 they've counted during the season, and as you say, five for touchdowns. And most of them have been tipped balls, the interceptions that they've had against Maggard. First and 20. Screen. He... And he cuts it inside, finding Kirk Johnson. Beyond the 40 to the 43-yard line. So they're within six yards of a first down as you look at scores from the NBA. And don't forget more from the college football scoreboard and Bob Carpenter after our game this afternoon. I thought Maggard here had tipped the screen. He's looking. He's looking. 
fact, he fakes it a little bit and then turns right back. It hits this little Kurt Johnson. And when I say little, I mean little. He's 5'7", 140. And we know him because down in Athens, he returned a kickoff for 108 yards oh, for a touchdown. You bet. And now Alfred Rawls sidestepping his fullback. Is out of bounds at the 48, maybe the 49-yard line. Should be enough for the first down. Alfred Rawls, by the way, you know something about him as well because at one time, Alfred Rawls appeared to be headed for Georgia and now, of course, a fine back here at Kentucky. Well, he did. Kentucky did a good recruiting job. They want to force Rawls outside, but they don't have to do that because he'll take outside. But what he does as good as anybody I've ever seen is stiff arm. Mm -hmm. He's got a hammer stiff arm. It's the best I've ever seen. Here it is again. He switches the ball, which is a good play here. Gets it to the outside, which you need to do, and watch him use that stiff arm. Pow, he pops it right in the head. And take a look at this. Oh. Oh. <laughs> little Gatorade and a soda or two. I mean, yeah. why not get a little quick kick <laughs> while you're on the sideline? Yeah, <laughs> Managers have got to refill that. <laughs> All the glasses again. It's Alfred tough. Rawls from Pitts, Georgia, the senior tailback, and he's destined to perhaps be a number one draft pick. As a matter of fact, Mel Kuyper, our draft expert, who will be on NFL game day tomorrow, projects both he and Barnett on the defensive side as potential number ones this coming spring. First and 10, Kentucky. Magger gets away. Great pursuit by Tennessee to stop him at the 45-yard line. Tracy Hayworth, number 88, out of Deckard, Tennessee, the senior, made the tackle. Now, Maggot on this uh, turned uh, something into a positive, which would have been a negative. He goes forward, and Hayworth, number 88, who can really run, comes from the backside and makes the play, but he ends up with five yards, so they're ahead of the game. Mm -hmm. Second down and five. You see the time remaining here in the opening quarter. It's the delay to Murray. Close to a Kentucky first down at the Tennessee 41-yard line. Shazon Bradley again in there to make the stop. Murray, the senior from Louisville, Kentucky. And uh, Murray is normally the blocker, but he can run pretty good. He's uh, got 99 knockdowns. Ooh. Maybe he's already got his 100th by now, but we'll, we'll see. We'll look for it. We'd like to welcome those of you that may have been watching that Penn State-Pittsburgh game that ended a few moments ago, 16-13. to 13. I'm Tim Brando with Vince Dooley. 4.46 remaining opening quarter here. Tennessee with a 3-0 lead over Kentucky. Rawls! Five, six, maybe seven yards that time. And a Kentucky first down for certain on the third and short. Ernest Fields, number 23, the inside linebacker, made the stop. Well, he goes behind Mazzella, number 63, and Pfeiffer turning out, number 75. Gets a good block from the fullback, Murray, who probably got his 100th, and then breaks out for positive yards in good field position now. Rawls, nice hole. Bounces outside, fumbles it. It will be controlled by Kentucky at the point of the fumble. Pickens coming up to make the stop, number 15 in white. And again, we can't emphasize this enough. Carl Pickens is doing something, Vince, that very few athletes can ever do. Have you ever had a guy <laughs> that could play both positions? I've had one in 25, 25 years that has done that. And we'll talk about that later because he is some great athlete, the most natural. Now watch him switch hands here. And you have to be careful and do it. You've got to put the ball away. You can't just hold it out there when you switch it because when you do that, that's what happens. Mm -hmm. Pickens knocked it out of there. Second and four, a pickup of six on that run by Rawls. Phillips is the receiver that Maggard wants, and now he tucks it in as he popped. <laughs> Inside the 30, down at the 28, and Carl Pickens nailed it. <laughs> Carl Pickens, uh, Coach Major says the best natural athlete he's ever coached. That's quite a statement. Here comes Maggot. We'll look for Pickens. I, he's just came, he just came to the safety man three three weeks ago. Watch this. Is that natural? <laughs> I know they've been working on tackling all the time for, for Pickens. Watch this. Hey. Came up, got a good lift, got his rear under him. Excellent tackle. As a wide receiver, he's been hung out to dry a few times. Now he has a little retaliatory maneuver. Third and five. First down, Kentucky at the 20. Kurt Johnson, the freshman from Paducah, made the catch. 
<laughs> what a good job uh, Maggard has done on this drive. He's going to roll right, he's rolled left. They want to avoid dropping straight back. They've had a lot of sacks. They had a lot of them against Florida last week. They had a lot of them against Alabama several ball games ago. So they're keeping Tennessee off balance right now. First and 10, just outside the Tennessee 20. Rawls. And a great block by the tight end, Rodney Jackson, to give him a lane as he's down to the 13-yard line. Shazon Bradley made the tackle. But the tight end, 85, there you see him out of Tyler, Texas, really lowered the boom on that linebacker of free safety. Well, this Bradley, who is just an excellent run defensive linebacker, gets all blocks pretty well and makes the tackle right there. Excellent. In fact, he went down as a nose guard, and they pull him back out in this new defensive scheme. Phillips in motion on second and three. Play fake. Maggard. Out of bounds. At the 10-yard line. Tracy Hayworth again in pursuit. It should be another Wildcat first down. Well, again, uh, Maggard continues to make positive yards in difficult situations. That could have been a loss right there. But he made the right decision and went ahead and made the first down. You see it on this possession, 11 plays, 70 yards, eating the time. That's exactly what Jerry Claiborne wants. He does not want Tennessee controlling this game offensively. They want to keep that offense on the bench and do it with long drives. Rawls, nice cutback inside the 10 down to the seven yard line. Martin Williams, number 66, the senior from Charleston, South Carolina. All 5'11", 270 pounds of him. Atop Rawls. There he is. Tim, they've got the big fullback in there, Rodney Shepard. He's 5'11", 260, the Buffalo. <laughs> That's what they call him, the Buffalo. And at 260, they say he looks like a Buffalo, 5'11", 260. Yeah, he is number 41. You'd want to know why they called him <laughs> Buffalo, and they told us. Yeah. Second and goal. Rawls. Look out. Touchdown, Kentucky. the Buffalo went Alfred Rawls and the Wildcats have the lead for the first time when you get that little squatty guy going north and south you can't tackle him high because he'll break a tackle or two Ken Willis who's had a great year will tack on the extra point Phillips will hold in the Southeastern Conference it's never easy Kentucky's lost some close ones now they have the lead because of that young man. Well, here's Rawls, and he's running behind Shepard, but he finds some little daylight and then cuts back in. What a nice cut behind Jackson, the tight end's block, and you can't tackle this guy high because he's going to go forward for the touchdown as he did there. So Rawls and the Wildcats have the lead. One of the great advantages of doing business with a firm like Schwab is that you're dealing with professionals across the whole country. They're creating... Saints are in search of the wild card. Mike Patrick and Joe Theismann will have that one for you tomorrow night. Here, I'm Tim Brando with Vince Dooley. It's 7-3 Kentucky. And the kickoff will come down to either Morgan or Pickens. Morgan again. Or check that. Pickens at the 12. Pickens gets it back to the 30-yard line. Brad Armstead running him out of bounds. And let's take a look at the Buffalo. Look at Shepard, number 41. And the Buffalo really draws a herd right in there. And Rawl said, look, I'm not going in that crack. I'm going to find me a hole, which he does outside. Here's again the Buffalo. There's a lot of people, so he finds the daylight and cuts back in a nice block by number 85, Rodney Jackson. And you can't tackle Rawls high. Rodney Shepard, by the way, is out of Brooklyn, New York. Rawls from Pitts, Georgia. That's a culture <laughs> shock in the backfield. Working together, though. Webb. Hey. Hey. Chuck Webb. Finally driven out of bounds at the 48, and markers fly. At 
the point he was taken out of the field of play, the yellow flags dropped. Albert Burks finally made the stop. Well, number 50, Maslinski, and the center, Fisher, who has really become a good blocker. Look at Maslinski. I tell you, I can run that way. No, not quite that way, but I, if you get that kind of hole, there's a lot of, mm. lot of backs that can be good backs and make great backs. You combine that together. A five face yard mask. face mask violation by the defense. A five yard penalty from the end of the run. So, so Burks apparently got some of the face mask as he took him out. That tacks on five more yards, and it will be at the 38. Well, here's what, let's see if we can see the face mask. Oh, he has the face mask of the oh, potential oh. blocker. Yeah. <laughs> he has Vince Moore's face mask, the other wide receiver. First and ten. Mm, good defense. Well, Webb, who had 45 yards prior to that 26-yard run we saw just a moment ago, is stopped for no gain this time. Doug Hauser in on the stop. Webb had 294 last, uh, last week against Ole Miss, which is a record, new school record. And he could tie a school record today. If he has that six 100-yard game, he would tie Johnny Jones, who did it in 83 and 84, and he's apparently already on his way. He burrows inside the 35, down to the 33. Oliver Barnett, number 79, making the tackle for Kentucky as time winds down here in the first quarter. Tennessee brought their tackle over, which they do quite a bit. In this case, Mac Ray, number 70, the left tackle, went over to the right side of the line, and those two tackles together is quite a blocking combination. A lot of decisions being made in college football today. Tennessee can help make some of those decisions with a victory over Kentucky. We'll be back in just a minute. Score Kentucky with the lead as we start the second quarter. I'm Tim Brando with Vince Dooley. Tennessee with third and six at the Kentucky 34. It's the delay to Webb. Shy of the first down. He stopped at the 30-yard line. Doug Hauser made the stop along with Billy Swanson. So it should be fourth down and two for Tennessee. And look at this. Well, all indications are good for Kentucky at least early on. Look at that. They've been outscored 55 to 10 by the opponents in the first quarter last season. This season has been a turnaround. Yeah, well, this there's no blues in this first quarter. No. They're ahead of the game right now. By the way, they are 5-0 and oh when leading after the first quarter this year. Webb on fourth down, and it will be close. Jerry Bell, the nose guard. I uh, checked that the left guard in that wide tackle six over to make the stop. That eight-man front coming to the forefront here. That's as close as you can get it, and Kentucky feels like they don't have it. And you, when you look down the line, they might not have it. Mm -hmm. Well, Johnny Majors thought about going for it on fourth down earlier. He went for it this time, and yeah. Kentucky's got it. And are they pumped up? You can knock Kentucky off the ball, but you won't keep them locked off the ball because they will recover in a hurry. And what a nice play by Bell, number 98, who is the key in their defense. And this is really a, an interesting thing, Tim, because, and we'll talk about it later, but I want to tell you about Tennessee being stopped in this situation. On first and 10, Mike Thomas, the motion back, number 32. And they'll throw it for him. He's got it. Mike Thomas has a first down to the 41-yard line. Carl Pickens again over there to make the stop. Let's talk about that point you were making about them being stopped. Well, what has happened? Tennessee probably since this season, once they've gotten inside that 35-yard line, has put points on the board probably 19 of 21 or 23 times. Very seldom have they been stopped once they got into four-down territory, and Kentucky has just done it. And Tennessee's defense has been a question. You saw the offensive staff talking to that offensive line. Not much for Mike Thomas this time. He gets about a yard off the left side of the Kentucky offensive line. James Wilson, Mark Moore, number 74, in on the stop. Ron Reeves, you saw on the telephone, getting some 
words from his offensive coordinator, Philip Fulmer. John is checking the grass. Picked a little bit up, blew it up. Reverse. That's number eight, Kurt Johnson. He got the one block he needed. Look out. First down, Kentucky. And a marker down. It could be a clip. That one block he wanted was borderline at best, and I believe it will be ruled a clip. I think it will be, but I was watching it, Tim, and I'm not so sure. Mm. But maybe we'll take a look at it and find out if it is. Did he sneak that head around the he front was, of the body? He was fighting to get it in front. During the run, the clip. Yeah. 15 yard penalty and on the foul. Second down. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think uh, <laughs> he hit him on the side. Let's see if we can see it again. Uh, that block is good. Right there. Matt Branham's block was the one that was a clip. Number 53. Second and 25. That's a catch for Kentucky, number 29, Darren Bilberry. That looked like when that one bounced off the ground. Looked one. like a short hop, didn't it? Yeah. Well, once again, Kentucky cannot afford penalties. That's the third big one for Kentucky. This one was very costly. What excellent field position they would have had on that run by Kurt Johnson. Third down and 21. A four-yard pickup for Bill Barry on that reception a moment ago. Looking long for Logan. Incomplete. J.J. McCluskey there in coverage. And Logan can't believe it. And, of course, the 50,000-plus, you know how they feel. <laughs> well, what they wanted to do is give him maximum for protection on the blitz. Fullback got up in there, and you'll see Logan, who has pretty good height. He's 6'2". McCleskey is only 5'8". So here they go up, and let's see. McCleskey goes right up for the ball. I yeah. think he was in good position. Yeah. No interference there. Everyone has a right for the football, and he was playing. And he jumped high. That little guy can get up in the air. Bill Hawk punts it away. Really gets a Tennessee bounce. Will be ruled dead at the 38-yard line. And we've got a marker down after only a 29-yard punt against the wind. Tennessee has the wind now in the second quarter. It's amazing how you get into the month of November and the wind even plays a, an even larger role as the weather cools off. Well, it uh, is a factor, no doubt, that the... Uh, see what we got here. There was a flip while the ball was loose on the white team. 15 on 10 loose and the end of the game. Well, you rarely see that when the punt is as short as that one was. That will back Tennessee up when we come back. In second quarter, football resting at the 23-yard line of Tennessee on first and 10. And they pitch it to Webb behind Amsler, the fullback. Another five yards or so before Billy Swanson comes up along with Ron Robinson to make the tackle. So, our storyline, Lexington, Kentucky. Both teams moving the ball well. Webb already 76 yards, well on his way to a 100-yard day. But Rawls countering with eight rushes for 38 yards and a touchdown. Field position has been good for Tennessee, and yet they trail in this game by four. Big stop by Kentucky, and they had good field positions. Webb bouncing outside. Boy, he's compared so often to Emmett Smith. He may even be faster than Emmett. We have a marker down. The reason I think he's been compared to Emmett Smith, Vince, is because he sheds as many would-be tacklers as the Florida star. Yeah, well, I think he's fast. In fact, he's got very deceiving speed, but there was an indication of it as he bounced outside. He's, he's the fastest man. Coach Majors told me on the football team, and I wouldn't have believed that until he told me that. 
Our referee, William Goss, has been busy so far today. A number of penalty flags. And you see Webb on the sidelines getting a bit of a blow. Holding by the offense. A, penalty a lot of holding penalties so far today, particularly this late in the year. Coaches can't stand seeing that. Let's see. Well, it looks like on the left of the screen there's got to be some holding. It looks like a takedown almost. Yeah, the official throws that flag right in that direction. The Tennessee man disappears out of the screen. I think there were two of them. Two holders. A regular convoy of holding going on. Second and ten. Or check that. Second, yes. Second and nine. Here they come. Kelly will get out of bounds. And there come the flags. Jerry Bell was right there. And he'll be flagged. This has been a point of emphasis all year long. And it'll be a 15-yarder against Kentucky. A lot more coming up on Sports Center tonight with respect to the NBA, college football, and beyond. And then basketball to come later from Mallory. Jerry Claven told me that the play of, of Jerry Bell, number 98, was the key to this ball game. And let's see if he hits him out of bounds. I don't know. When your head's down like that, Vince, uh, the defender has to. He's, that's just good technique. He doesn't know where he is. Well, I think that initially, but maybe the fact that he just drove him on out of bounds is what they're talking about, because initially, I don't think it was that bad. First and 10 with the ball at the 42-yard line now. Volunteers operating offensively. They'll rule that one incomplete out of bounds. Intended for Morgan. And there's Jerry Bell down there. Now he has his had a bad back. He's been hurt. Uh, and he didn't play in the Florida game last week, which really hurt him. But this guy, Jerry Bell, a real key. He's just a sophomore, and he's going to be a great player. Well, he fell down the steps in the dormitory. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's bad enough when you get injured on the playing field. I've had that happen to me right before key ball games. You lose a player off the field, and it really hurts. Kelly, one for seven in the air thus far. And he'll take a three-step drop and find his man, Thomas Woods. That could be enough for the first down. Tony Missick, number 27, the senior from Miami, Florida, made the tackle for Kentucky. Tennessee and Kelly's got to do this. They've got to throw those little quick eight, six, and seven-yard quick passes because Kentucky will come with you with a lot of blitz. They'll come with you with eight people. And they're going to move those outside ends back and forth to deceive it. And the quarterback's got to be able to pick it up and read it like he did just then. Yet another different formation for the Volunteers. And again, Hit it again. Yep. Right on target to Woods, and it's close to another first down. You saw number six, Tony Massey, who is the outside linebacker, or the end. Come, you'll see Massey right here, and he's... He's blitzing, and if you're reading, as Kelly did right here, he saw it, and quickly, and you'll see Massey come up, which leaves now a one-on-one -on -one situation with Woods and Missy, number 27. Well, we may see yet another major change in the majors' offense here in the second quarter of this one. First and 10 at the Kentucky 36. Play fake, and he's looking to throw. He goes underneath to the tight end, Vaughn Reeves, number 89, the sophomore from Knoxville, Tennessee. Benzinger, Craig Benzinger, number 44, was the linebacker underneath. And Kelly now with three quick completions, all of the short variety. And hitting the tight end, they don't throw to him as, as much, but Benzinger is from Stone Mountain, Georgia. Close yes. by Athens and Atlanta, and are just a tough, good football player. Two of Kelly's completions have been to tight ends today. Second and four. There it is again. Same play, and Wood steps out of bounds. He does have the first down inside the 25-yard line. It is amazing, though, to watch Johnny Majors change an offensive scheme through the course of a game. These are adjustments being made. I asked him last night when we spoke why all the changes in his 22 years, and I think he, 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 he believes that because he's coached in the Big 8 at Iowa State, the East with Pitt, and now at Tennessee, with inferior talent and superior talent, that's why he's been able to make he's those He's coached a lot of different places, but he's fundamentally a sound Tennessee football coach. Block and tackle and run the football. 
There he goes. Amsler, the fullback, inside the 20, down to the 18-yard line. This final Saturday in the month of November, bringing a lot of key college football games. Illinois winning big over Northwestern now in the third. Michigan State, maybe the best four-loss team in America on their way to victory. Purdue beating Indiana. Now, that cost the Hoosiers a bowl game. They're five and six. They had to win that game. And Air Force leading Utah in the third. So Kentucky may still have a chance, huh? Plenty of time for Kelly. That's out of the end zone to Harper again. The second time that's happened uh, to Alvin Harper. But boy, did Kelly have time to find an open receiver. Well, Kelly had a lot of time. They're up. Obviously, they're going to throw the football, but for some reason, the Kentucky team decides to slow rush. You can see that uh, Barnett, number 79, is just dropping off. I think maybe they're figuring a little short pass over the middle, and they can jump up and knock it down. But no rush by Kentucky whatsoever. Not such great blocking by the offensive line. Third and four. Here they come. And they wrap up the web. Jerry Bell and Billy Swanson. Billy Swanson has been the leading tackler. He steps up on the blitz and catches it just right. We'll see Swanson right here, 84. And he has really helped Kentucky this year. Former outside linebacker. Could have been a fullback. And again, stopped Kentucky, uh, stopped Tennessee, and now in this case, force a field goal. Burke has already hit one of 29, and this in the 35. Now, Arter, and it's a fake. The holder, Lee England, finds his man. Tennessee's alive. <laughs> Johnny Majors is making more than just the usual changes in this game. Now I know how Johnny was thinking over there. Whoa, whoa. You get a little tight and feel good about it. Good fake, good call. And the kicker goes right on through. And he goes ahead and throws the football. That it is Johnny's reaction. Yeah, he feels good because he's, uh, he's thinking about it. And yeah, okay. <laughs> Please hold I on to the football. Lee England with a nice pass to hold it. Webb down to the 10-yard line. Tony Massey coming up again to make the stop. And there's Lee England. A holder and obviously a quarterback during his high school days getting an opportunity here. That's one pass completion he'll never forget. <laughs> Big one for Lee England. And you always like to have a holder that played quarterback just for that reason. 14th play of the drive now for Tennessee. Webb. Dragged down from behind by Swanson. Billy Swanson's been one of the biggest surprises throughout the course of this year. They moved him from outside back to inside linebacker. He's playing well today. We asked the coaches, if you appoint to one player who's been most consistent, they'll say Swanson. And look at here. He had to leap out to get a very, very fast Chuck Webb to make that play. So Webb almost turned the corner on him. Third down and five. They could get the first down without benefit of the touchdown. They're audibleizing. Five receivers are out. Harper and Swanson was there to make certain he couldn't grab it. <laughs> he either got a hand on it or at least hurt the vision of Alvin Harper. Now Swanson, Swanson made Kelly throw high on the first time. And let's see if Swanson is in on this. I'm sure he is. There he is. Makes the play. Yeah. <laughs> Great play. He did tip it. Just went ahead and extended his body out. A tremendous effort type linebacker. And I can see what the coaches are talking about. A great series for Swanson. Well, England will have to hold it again. And Burke will try it again. This no time fake this time. From 25 yards out. And they get it. Well, 
Well, Johnny Majors gets the three, but when he called for the fake, he was thinking six, and Kentucky turned them away. Here's Swanson once again. Watch him extend his body out and just get his hands on the football. On the other hand, Harper went right on through his hands. Great play by Swanson. Academic All-American, and as you know, Kentucky led the College Football Association, the Academic Achievement Award, graduation rate 90%. Kurt Johnson gets it out to the 23-yard line, and that's where the Wildcats take over first and 10. I mentioned the uh, graduation rate is 90%, which means that Kentucky led all schools with College Football Association each year, and Jerry Claven has a lot to be proud of in that respect. There could be 17 all-SEC academic players for Kentucky this year if that were to happen, and all of them, by the way, are in the two deep on the depth chart. These are not guys that are walk-ons that just happen to make the team. Uh, I know Jerry's proud of it. Just over seven minutes left in the second quarter, and Maggard dumps it, and wow. it's incomplete for Phillips, and Carl Pickens <laughs> was right there again. Other scores. Mississippi leading Mississippi State in the third quarter. Huge game for those two teams. Interstate rivalry, Minnesota over Iowa, 29-7. Big win for John Gutekunst, perhaps the coach there. Baylor over Texas by a bundle. What? What could they be looking ahead to AM? Southern Miss leading East Carolina. East Carolina, by the way, gave Pitt all they wanted and then some. Bill Lewis at East Carolina has done an excellent job in his first year. Second and ten. Maggard, hey. shovel pass. And Rawls is out to the 26-yard line, maybe the 27. Again, Ernest Fields from Milan, Tennessee, the sophomore, number 23, up to make the stop. This is the shuffle pass, or we used to call it. Here it is to Rawls, forward pass, just a little forward pass lateral. We used to call it the Utah pass. C Cactus Jack Curtis, who was the coach out there, was the one invented it, but a lot of people probably don't remember Cactus Jack, a great football coach. Well, we remember him now. Yeah, <laughs> he was a good one. Third, great man. And, third and six, Maggard. Over the middle, oh. incomplete behind Andy Murray, the fullback, coming out of the backfield. And Rawls, who always seemingly does well on first down, look at that. In 73, 69, and 43, all for touchdowns. Averages five yards per carry on first down. They didn't get that in this series, and that may have hurt them. Well, that means give the ball to Rawls on first down. They'll punt it away now in a fourth and six situation. Bill Hawk, number 13, to do the honor. Maggard uh, rushed his Oh, boy. Markers are down. Could be offsides against Kentucky as the catch is made by Thomas Woods. That was the high snap. And Hawk did a good job of feeling it and getting it off. Tennessee was in there in a hurry, and they were offside. Mm -hmm. They were in there illegally in, hurry, in a hurry. So uh, this, this would make it a fourth and one rather than fourth and six so it would still be a punt formation for kentucky one would think it's a 33 yard punt for hawk and again against the wind i think jerry claiborne is waving off that penalty he's trying to get word to his captains down there the defense was offsides it's five yard penalty from the previous spot fourth down now, I think Jerry wants to go ahead and kick it again. I think he feels like he can get a better kick. I think some of the players were ready to come off in anticipation that the offense might come back out, and yeah. he said no. Now there's Woods again. Back the, only, the only problem with, de with denying that is the fact that uh, your team has already run down the field once, and they may be a little tired. they got to do it again. Looks like they got maybe too many people on the field. Now they're closing in tight. 25 second clock is down to three. They better get rid of it. Nice spiraling nice. boot. Woods at his 28. Stopped at the 34. So the decision was a good one by Coach Claiborne and staff. Tony Zygmunt made the stop after that punt by Bill Hawk.
Lexington, Kentucky, Commonwealth Stadium, where the bluegrass turns brown this time of year. <laughs> I'm Tim Brando, along with Vince Dooley. Ball at the 34-yard line. First down, 10, Tennessee, trailing by one. And spread out. Woods, that's the first down at the Kentucky 46. They found a huge seam in that zone, and Woods was open. That's his third catch of the game. The first one downfield, though. Well, that big offensive line of Tennessee certainly gave Kelly a lot of protection. Plenty of time, steps up in there and finds Woods down the middle, and Woods uh, needs only about 20 catches, and he'll uh, break another Tennessee record. Wow. Kelly stands in that pocket a long time, absorbs a hit and a flag because of that hit. Doug Hauser, number 99, converged, and they sandwiched. He and Barnett sandwiched Kelly, and the flag, the end result. Got a personal foul. Once again, can, Kentucky cannot afford a lot of penalties in this ball game. They've got to play a clean football if they're going to have a chance to win a clean football game. Hauser hits him late. A little late in the backside. Again, though, that head down. He's going after the tackle, not really re realizing the ball's been relieved. Well, that's true. Just a little bit too late. But you do have to protect the quarterback. And again, a point of emphasis by all of the officials throughout the country. First and 10 at the Kentucky 31. What's interesting is Carl Pickens is in the game as a receiver. And they threw it to Webb, who hasn't caught a pass all year, coming out of the backfield. And he actually was the secondary receiver. Pickens may have been the primary receiver. It's interesting that a guy like Pickens can play both ways, but he can do it. And here he is on offense, and if he's in the ball game, as the coaches say, we're going to throw the ball to him. We're not just going to put him in there as a decoy, because to play both ways in this day and time really, really is a tremendous compliment to a superb athlete. They'd like to have him in there at 20 to 25 plays, as you mentioned. Kelly has six completions on 15 attempts. This could be a passing situation as he checks up. They're trying to hide it. And we got a marker down. There was some movement by Tennessee as they were trying to make that adjustment. And the flag, the end result, too much time. The game in the and that disturbs Johnny. And what's, what's going on is that, tennis, that Kentucky is trying to give Tennessee different looks. Trying to give Andy Kelly a lot of good looks. Here's Carl Pickens. Yeah, Carl Pickens. Now remember this when you talk about the effectiveness of Carl Pickens. He plays both offensively and defensively, and you mentioned you had one player. I want to know who that player was as we look at the three areas where he has been successful. Offense, defense, <laughs> and touchdowns yeah. in each one. Obviously receiving a touchdown, a kickoff return for a touchdown, and then an interception for a touchdown. All right, who was that player that you had that went both ways? His name is <laughs> Ray Donaldson. We moved him to center, not both ways. We moved him to center in the middle of the season, and he never played center in his life and started a football game. He's still playing, I might add, for the Baltimore Colts at center, and he's been up there about 10 or 12 years. Pickens with a couple of interceptions this year, and one of them, of course, returned for a touchdown. There's a conversation taking place now, but between Johnny Majors and the officials relative to that flag and the 25 second clock. And now the referee William Goss over to talk to Jerry Claiborne about it. And that's Tommy Lorino, official from the conference, who played for me at Albany many, many years ago. I was a backfield coach. Tommy's an excellent official. He's the line judge working yes, with Tommy Goss. to the left right yeah. there. Great little halfback. Usually, Vince, when you see this, both coaches being informed, it has something to do with the 25-second clock. Again, we're only speculating here, but no time is showing on that 25-second clock that, of course, gives the teams the amount of time between plays and costs Johnny Majors five yards. There you see it. Well, that's normally the case, and I don't even know how we uh, played football without the 25-second clock, but we did for a long, long time. 
because you never knew. The quarterback never knew how much time he had left. A lot of coaches believe the clock should be put underneath the crossbar so it's within the vision of the quarterback. Well, I wish they'd all get him in the same place, whatever, wherever it is. Be consistent. Second and 15. Good rush. Good rush. Barnett. Oh. He gets away from him, though. And finally, Kelly hauled down at the 35 by Joey Couch, number 48, out of Paintsville, Kentucky. 6'1", 248-pound sophomore. Well, that's a great example of what Oliver Barnett can do. He can, he can come when he wants to. And a real possible number one draft choice. He flushes him right there. And then Kelly gets off and Joey Couch comes in in a diving tackle. He's an uh, overachiever, former fullback. That's why he has a 48 number. Third and 15. Kelly. He'll tuck it away and Couch ushers him out of bounds at the 33-yard line. So Tennessee again shut down in Kentucky territory, not being able to convert when they have the good field position. Well, there's Couch, and uh, what a hustler he is, an overachiever, as I say, a former fullback. That's why he runs, he wears 48, former linebacker, and he is very, very quick and gutsy. And he's tired. <laughs> Burke now will try a field goal try. 51 yards, apparently, as they line it up. At the 42, it will be a 52-yard attempt. That one's partially blocked and no good. So Kentucky denies Tennessee yet again with 422 remaining, and the crowd appreciates its defense. When you're kicking a long distance, you got to line drive it a little more. And when you do that, you're subject to it being blocked. And it looks like that uh, number two, Gary Willis, out of Gainesville, Florida, made that play off the corner. Mm -hmm. Usually, you make them up in the front, in the middle. Play action. Maggard dodging would-be tacklers and finding Murray. Andy Murray to the Tennessee 36. About, uh, about Freddie Maggard, who really was in trouble on this play-action waggle pass, but he comes under the block of the guard and then continues looking down the field and gets the ball off to Murray, number 35, who makes a great run. He gets a good block, but Maggard turns a real negative. I mean, a five-yard five negative, negative into nothing. Here's Logan, number 80. Excellent job right here by number 80, Logan, on this block to Flea Murray. But again, Maggard, what a game he's playing. Wide receivers do make good blocks in college football, and Logan just made one there to set up that play, and the fans in Lexington love it. Great conferences in college basketball there, the Big East ACC Challenge here. In the SEC, Maggard finds Rawls, and he dropped it. Well, we talked about drop passes for Freddie Maggard. Now, granted, that one may have been a bit underthrown, but Rawls had every opportunity to grab that one, and all he could see was the end zone. Well, I think that uh, Rawls is wide open, was too anxious. If he just squatted, make sure you catch the ball first before you leave it. He wanted to, he wanted to get it and get going, and he, <laughs> he feels bad. Where's Clark? Oh, no, 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 no. Mm. Left tackle move. So we got a marker down, maybe a double marker down. We will. Mark Moore hit Maggard after there was movement in the Kentucky line, so this will be a double penalty. Well, you can move and react, but you can't blast him. Mm -hmm. Got a false start by restricted offensive line at five yards. Now, what? now that's five yards. Well, I think must be all that they've called. Wow. And, uh, yeah, let's see. Mm. Now, that's got to be a flag. Well, he bumped him, yeah. He, he did, number 74. And Jerry Claiborne is in total agreement with us up here, and I, I, for one, can't understand it. I saw a second flag come after that hit. Someone picked up an inadvertent flag, second and 15. Blitz. Logan 
He's got it. At the 28-yard line, maybe the 27, J.J. McCluskey made the stop, the freshman corner that Maggard's been working over. Well, McCluskey is a young freshman. As a matter of fact, true freshman, but he's going to be off of the receivers, and he's not going to play them tight. And Kentucky felt like they could throw the ball in front of him. He's already made one good play today, though, Vince. Made a great play on something deep because mm -hmm. he doesn't want you to get deep on him. But you're going to be able to throw in front of him, and Logan caught that in front of him. He's a great little athlete, and Johnny Majors was telling me he's an inspiring player. He's got plenty of life and enthusiasm and bounces around. Are they going to ever get this chain straight? <laughs> it <laughs> is taking a while, isn't it? One time in a ball game, I had a chain to break on a critical first down. Can you imagine that? <laughs> he stretched it out and it just broke. <laughs> it is a first down. Jerry Claiborne, who's had his share of bad breaks, will take that short chain <laughs> anytime. Absolutely. Johnny Majors looking on, realizing his team has really had a number of squandered opportunities here in the first half. Only coming up with six points. First and ten, Kentucky. Rawls. It's hard to run wide on Tennessee. Fields coming up, along with Marion Hobby, number 90, from Irondale, Alabama. Marion Hobby just made a superb defensive play, and he is one fine player. He's He's got 18 big plays, seven pass breakups, and 10 tackles for losses. He does a lot of things, makes a lot of big plays. College football scoreboard coming up after the game, along with Maui basketball. Little Nova, North Carolina, to start that doubleheader. Whoa. Bill Barry gets it out of bounds at the 30-yard line on the second and 15 play. Daryl Hardy, number 87, knocked him out. Hardy may be, well, he is the best pass rusher, perhaps, could be the best athlete on this very young Tennessee defense. Well, he runs the 40 and 4-5, which is very, very fast, of course. A little light in the britches, so to speak, for a linebacker, but he'll blitz you. A little togetherness in that huddle. Uh, number 75, Nick Pfeiffer, and he is big at 3.05. Third and 13, 2.50 remaining, second quarter. Sprint out action. Now they come back the other way to the tight end, and he drops it. Bobby Henderson. Well, once again, that's Mag 26 drops now for Maggard this year. He had 24 coming in. We've seen two in this series alone. He uh, he's had a great football game. Good call here by uh, by Kentucky. Maggard comes out and then turns back and throws to the tight end on a screen. Excellent. Excellent block, and now he's got a chance to really run with the ball with all these blockers. But once again, a drop pass. 47-yard attempt by Willis. It's yeah. good. into the wind and that's a heck of a field goal kicker and he may become Kentucky's all-time percentage kicker let's see if we can tell if it's good he's not sure yep it is big play here right before half from Owensboro Kentucky Ken Willis 47 yards into a stiff wind that could gust up to 31 miles per hour it's been probably at the 17 to 20 mile per hour range throughout most of this first half. Well, they say his range is 55 yards, and when you bump, hit one into the wind, which will probably cost you about 10 yards, he probably was right within his range. There you see that wind blowing from west to east in this stadium as it is set up here at Commonwealth. And now Willis will kick it off. 2.37 remaining until halftime. Bob Carpenter, Lee Corso, and Eno Cook standing by. And here comes Morgan. 
Anthony Morgan down at the 26 yard line. In 1981, Tennessee opened up with a 10 nothing lead against their rival. And then Anthony Hancock. Boy, now there's a great receiver of the past, a former first round pick. He catches this 65 yard touchdown. But Kentucky quarterback Randy Jenkins showed that he could also air it out. 58 yards to Rick Massey to set up a touchdown. Then Kentucky went ahead for good when Jenkins connected with Pete Venable. And the 21-10 UK win was the last time the Wildcats beat Tennessee here in Lexington. Here in 1989, it's first and 10 Tennessee, trailing by four. Amsler met with markers down, and he's hauled down at the 30-yard line. He bet him at the line of scrimmage, but he carried him five yards. Amsler's the former tailback. I don't know what kind of penalties we got, but we got a lot of flags. John Collins, just a freshman out of Madisonville, number You're 92. holding by the offense. Holding by the defense. Fouls off set. We play first down. Uh, then why call it? Uh, they're two interesting coaches. Both of them cut their teeth in the Southeastern Conference. Johnny played at Tennessee, mm -hmm. and of course, Jerry Claiborne played at Kentucky, and both of them have been off to different schools, but they've come back home to the Southeastern Conference. And you like that, I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I spent a few years around the conference. First and 10 with the ball just beyond the 26-yard line. Blitz. Nice call. Amsler right down the sideline. They don't have him down yet. Finally, at the 38-yard line, Massey the first to make contact, then Sterling Ward, number four, helping to drag him down. But a 36-yard gain. We're at Commonwealth Stadium in Lexington, Kentucky. It's 10-6 with 1.58 remaining here in the second quarter. Well, it's a good call on a blitz, and if you catch a team in a blitz, then it, the linebacker's got to get out and cover Amsler, and evidently he got blocked. We don't see him anywhere. And there goes Amsler, who is a good runner for big yardage. Webb, nice move. Boy, that vision, so important. He saw the opening on the right side, and he's ruled down at the 20-yard line. Forward progress stopped by Swanson and Craig Benzinger. And Alvin Harper being worked on, that right knee being taped up along the Tennessee sidelines. That would be a big loss. He's their best, most physical wide receiver. I mentioned that he's a high jumper. As a matter of fact, he won the Southeastern Conference indoors seven feet, two and a half inches. That would be a big loss if you lose Alvin Harper. Much like Herman Moore, who plays at Virginia, we saw last week. That quick out to Woods again. That's eight or nine yards three times in a row they picked up on that pattern, Vince, and you called it early on in the early portion of this quarter. Chris Tolbert made the stop. That pass is there for the taking if Tennessee wants well, it. Well, it's there if they catch the outside linebackers right, and the outside linebackers, Brady and Massey, have got to, got to play games come in or coming back off to play pass defense. Coming up at halftime, the Railback Halftime Report. Bob Carpenter, along with Bino Cook and Lee Corso, scores and highlights from today's action. Included in that, an upset as Indiana goes down to Purdue. Big win for Freddie Akers, that interstate rivalry. And more importantly, the word, of, of course, that was unofficial yet official in this bowl system that we're now in in 89 was that Indiana, if they had won that game, would have gone to the Freedom Bowl. So now there's a big opening in Anaheim, and Kentucky would love to get a win to impress those folks, I'm sure. Well, that uh, would be a good possibility, and we still got problems with the bowl and the bowl selections. Uh, I don't think we're right yet, and a lot of our coaches share it. If we had a rule that nobody could take a team that's lost more than four games, I think you'd solve a lot of that, those problems because you'd have to wait right to the end to determine which teams will go to which bowl. And so many games this weekend and next weekend are meaningless in the national scope. If that rule were invoked, then many games would become very meaningful, and it would be ultimately good for college football. I agree with you, Vince. Second and two now for Tennessee. You see the timeouts remaining. The balls have won. Well, that's the first down. Inside the 10, down to the seven-yard line, Craig Benzinger made the stop. He wants to hurry it up, hurry it up, hurry it up. That's what Johnny is saying. At the line. 
And the 25 second clock is not operating. It shows zero. They stopped as the manager trying to say, don't outstretch me. Taking the line with me. Now the 25 second clock operating again, and Kelly throws. Knocked away. Ron Robinson, the free safety, number 26. Boy, Swanson made a great play down here a few minutes ago, and now Robinson gets his turn batting one down. Robinson is the leading hitter. He's a good one. Let's see if he gets this one. I thought I saw Swanson in there somewhere. Mm -hmm. There's Swanson and Robinson both. Swanson may have been in there, but Robinson is a heavy hitter. Out of Nashville, Tennessee, a senior has had some shoulder problems this year. This is a walking wounded group from Kentucky. Second and goal at the seven. Yep. Movement in that Tennessee offensive line. That'll back him up. 34 seconds remaining until halftime. Yeah, look at Johnny. I know how he feels. What it does, it means that they're going to have to throw every time now. Mm -hmm. It's, a, it's a third down and about uh, 13 instead of second and eight. Guard by the offense, by the offensive line. With 34 seconds, and uh, Kentucky's going to get in a long, gated three-point stance, and they're going to rush the passer. Now, you could fool them by running a draw, but it would... With 34 seconds, Se might, might be a great call if it works. Second and goal from the 12. Kelly, look out for Harper. Out of bounds again, a third time. Boy, Johnny cannot believe it. And I don't blame him. Harper's made two of the three times outstanding catches, and none of them have counted. If he were in the CFL, it'd be no problem. <laughs> but not here oh, in the tough. CFA. I assume he was out. Let's take a look at it and see. Officials were right there. Yeah, it's just a little bit too long. Kelly's numbers are picking up. Eight out of 19 for 114 yards. But the Wildcats defense is really forcing him to throw. And Majors Got wants it. to use that last time out. They hadn't seen him yet. They, wanted, they hadn't seen him. Kelly getting away from the pressure. It's out of bounds. Harper again, the intended receiver, and Johnny wanted that timeout. He had one more left. Kelly, remember, just a sophomore, not realizing that, and they did not spend a timeout that they could have used at a crucial time. Well, it gets frustrating. There he is. He wants it. Give it to me. Time, time. You can be screaming. I, mm -hmm. There's no way they can hear you. I've you, done you that. Can see, you can see they're going up to the line of scrimmage, too, yeah, Vince. I've done that many a time. Greg Burke will try yet another field goal. 29 yards for the second time he hits from that distance here in the first half. 16 seconds remain, and you see Johnny talking with the sophomore. You got you to gotta be thinking with me, young guy. We had a timeout to utilize. That's, I'm sure, what he has in mind for... His quarterback, Andy Kelly. NFL game day gets you started tomorrow with our Emmy Award winning crew, Chris Berman, leading the charge. And then NFL primetime at 7 p.m. Eastern time. All of that leading up to this. The Rams and the Saints. Remember, New Orleans was facing elimination earlier in the year. Went to Anaheim and won big against Los Angeles. Now they're back in the wild card fray with six victories. They, along with the Rams, hopeful of a wild card spot, chasing the 49ers in the NFC West. Mike Patrick and Joe Theismann will be there to call it for you. 16 seconds remaining here. Kentucky leading Tennessee 10-9. I'm Tim Brando with Vince Dooley. Greg Burke, who kicked the field goal, is an interesting story. He came out of uh, the Mississippi Delta Junior College and a mutual friend of Johnny's and myself uh, called Johnny and told him about Greg Burke and also called me, but we were in a little better shape with our kickers and Johnny was, and he's really been productive. I think now he's 10 of 12. Mm -hmm. Three for four today, missing a 52-yarder that was blocked, you'll recall, hitting on 28, 25, and 29 yards, and now... It's the onside kick. The Vols had a chance, but it's recovered by Kentucky. It appears to be number 30 for UK, Tony Zygmunt, that finally got on top of it for the Big Blue. I don't know why he kicked it so far, but uh, they came close to getting this one. It bounced around, went through two or three pitches, overran it. Mm -hmm. Kentucky was... 
finally got it. And it was Rodney Jackson that got on top of it rather than Zygmunt. Zygmunt was the second man there. First and ten for UK. They're going to throw it up. They got three wide receivers, so which means they're going to put it up in the air, I guess. Remember Sean Moore to Herman Moore last week? Well, they go for the underneath pattern. Kurt Johnson. And it's incomplete. Well, you were watching that game, I know, last week when Derek Dooley was playing, and <laughs> Herman Moore caught that pass from Sean Moore. That really put the game away for Virginia. That well, was the turning point in that game. Really an interesting uh, play right before halftime, and uh, they put it up, and I mean, he threw it a mile up in the air, and everybody jumped except Herman Moore. He jumped about a three inches and caught it. He's so big. So much to talk about at halftime, and you see Jerry Claiborne now talking with Freddie Maggard. So much for Lee and Bino and Bob to talk about, what with the bowl decisions coming out, you see at the Railback Halftime Report. And now with this loss by Indiana, the Freedom Bowl should have a position open. And remember this, Kentucky beat Indiana earlier this year. But because they had the Heisman candidate, Anthony Thompson was ready to take Bill Mallory's club right into Anaheim for that game. So a lot of questions to be answered. I'm certain they'll preview that Miami Notre Dame game that's also coming up a bit later. We'll chat a bit about that. All of that coming up at halftime. You see the timeouts remaining here. Kentucky has one left to use. And, of course, Tennessee would love nothing more to see a zero there. Johnny Majors wanted one before that last third down play. Well, Maggard has got to put the ball uh, in the end zone or close to it. They're going to have any kind of a chance now. A little short pass early would have been all right. But right here, he's got to put it up a mile. Let's see if he can throw it long. That ain't long enough. Intercepted to close out the first half. David Bennett, the freshman from Germantown, came down with it, and the Volunteers ranked eighth in the country, hoping for a share of the SEC title and an opportunity to play on New Year's Day, are trailing by one to a Kentucky team that's approaching this game as though it were their bowl game. 10-9, our score. We'll be back in a few moments. Let's get you back now to Bob Carpenter. Grambling and Stephen F. Austin, the group from Nacogdoches, Texas, and Grambling, Louisiana. That is a basketball score, 56-52. to 52. Here, more of a defensive game, though with a lot of offense, a lot of offense between the 20s. Not much once Tennessee has been able to get inside that 20. They haven't been able to punch it through, and that's been the storyline to this game. Tennessee will kick it off. Greg Burke does the honors. And Kurt Johnson starts at his five. And Johnson finally hauled down at the 20-yard line. The Wildcats were three plays and out to start the game, but then a long drive, 13 plays, 80 yards leading to a touchdown. Then they were forced into a couple of punt formations before driving 36 yards for a field goal. And then the interception to close out the half in desperation on the Hail Mary. But Kentucky has gotten the most out of its offense, usually starting drives from deep in their own territory. But they've got to possess the football. And on first down, if you can get a big play out of Rawls, you're ahead of the game. And Kentucky has got to be able to rest their defense by keeping the football offensively. Now Alfred Rawls averages 5.1, as we pointed out in the first half, on first down carries. He got exactly five yards that time. And it's second and five now for Kentucky. Freddie Maggard's had an outstanding half of play. And they go to Rawls again. Nothing doing this time. You see a marker down at the line of scrimmage. Marion Hobby, number 90, made the tackle. No place to run on that side of the football. And it's uh, against uh, Kentucky. I mean, against Tennessee. There's been a lot of penalties in the ball game. Mm -hmm. uh, Kentucky's had six, and now this is Tennessee's six. So it's kind of balanced out. By the way, Bob Carpenter mentioned at halftime that Florida could be in the Freedom Bowl picture because of Indiana's loss, and obviously they only have three losses now with Florida State coming up next week on ESPN. Here's the call. The defense was offsides. It's five-yard penalty. Second down. It's tough to run on number 90, Javi. He, he stacks you up right at the line of scrimmage and gives you nowhere to go. Rawls wants to go outside, but Hobby kept him inside. I spoke with Kentucky Athletic Director C.M. Newton, and he believes that Kentucky is very much in the Freedom Bowl picture now. What with that Indiana loss today? There goes Rawls. 
That should be a first down out to the 32-yard line. J.J. McCluskey made the stop. Well, you touched on time of possession, Vince. Look at that. Statistically, this game, Kentucky not getting the rushing yardage that Tennessee has gotten, and that, of course, means time of possession. The Volunteers have had it, and you believe Kentucky could be worn down in the fourth quarter. Well, I think it's going to be a key because uh, Tennessee's had the football over 17 minutes in the first half to Kentucky's 12 and a half, so Kentucky has got to maintain some possession in this second half. First and 10, straight pitch to Alfred Rawls. Out to the 45-yard line, Carl Pickens made the stop. Well, when you get him turned up, it, he can run. Hobby, I thought, made an excellent play, but he didn't get off the block fast enough. Here he is. See, he didn't release fast enough to get Rawls. Because you better release in a hurry or he'll run by you as he did then. 13 yards for Alfred. And you see the numbers, 53 yards and a touchdown so far. Well, on his way to a 100-yard performance. And he's going to get a lot of opportunities here in the second half. Three yards this time on first down. Shazon Bradley coming up along with Mark Moore, number 74, to combine on the stop. Well, in the first half, they mixed their plays very, very well. After a first down rushing, they'd come back and throw the ball on first down on play action. Mm -hmm. They need to continue that trend as they try to move down the football field. They're not going to just take it and run it, Tennessee, because Tennessee's defense philosophically is stop the run first. They come up with an extra down lineman here on second and seven. Maggard. Oh, oh. Intercepted by Pickens. Marker down at the Tennessee 45-yard line. Thrown in the secondary. So hold on. It was a tip. Pass interference by the offense is declined. Yeah, first down. So the volunteers get it back. Sean Walker apparently tipped this ball. That Pickens is really amazing. This guy's intercepted a pass in every football game, and he's been back there. This is a tip ball, but watch the reaction of Pickens. Comes around, quickly gets it. He is an athlete superb. Walker, number 45, made the tip. Just a sophomore out of College Park, Georgia. Sean Walker tipping that one into the hands of Pickens. First and 10, Tennessee at their 45. Webb. Into Kentucky territory at the 48. We should point out as the marker comes down, Freddie Maggard's had three drops tonight, nine interceptions this year against six touchdowns, and this one another tipped interception. And he's had a number of tips throughout the course of this year. Well, all the most of the interceptions he's had has been on tip balls. Clipping by the offense. I don't know if I've seen as many penalties this late in a conference game in a long, long while. Well, we've got about six or seven on each side, and it's uh, it's fortunate for both teams that the other team is, is making just mm -hmm. as many as the first team, because otherwise that could really be a factor, but it's kind of a washout now mm -hmm. with so many of them having penalties. Jerry Claiborne, frustrated. Second and 25. Kelly for Woods. Right back to midfield. Perhaps into Kentucky territory at the 49. Albert Burks makes the stop. The right side corner, number 37. Well, there's a sweet spot right there in the middle. And Woods goes ahead and gets it. Then kind of sits down right in there. Ball's thrown well. And Woods continues to catch a lot of footballs. He's had 114 career catches. And again, only needs about 20 more to break an all-time Tennessee record. And that's saying something considering all the great receivers yeah. at Tennessee. Webb. Well, you can't tackle him high, but he does get some help. Coming up, number 95, Mike Miners, the senior from Louisville, to help on that spot. The initial tackle was an arm tackle upstairs, and Webb will shed those in a hurry. Tony Massey, number six, penetrated in to make first contact. He's the big playmaker, number six, Massey, and I've seen him a lot of times through the years. And it's a very demanding position because he's got to contain, rush, and also play pass defense and that outside linebacker in position. Third and four. 
Intercepted by Ron Robinson. Kentucky's got it right back. Again, the Volunteers, once into Kentucky territory, are turned away. Kelly kind of looked exactly where he's throwing the football. Looked at him a good while, and Robinson was able to read it. He was uh, certainly looking for number 81, Harper. And uh, it was quite obvious that Robinson was playing man on Harper. Wow, wow, what a hit. Rawls carrying the ball into Tennessee territory at the 49. Dwayne Dotson made the stop, and there's Kelly after the mistake. And But again, the Volunteers have been handcuffed a bit as you look at Ron Robinson coming up with that interception. He's a happy camper. Well, there. again, uh, Kelly was looking for Harper, and Robinson was playing man on Harper, and he read him all the way and made an excellent interception. That's his third, as you see, in the season. Second and seven. It's the delay. Number 49, Mike Knox, the backup fullback, close to a first down. Well, that was a trap play and a, just an excellent call because usually when they put the tailback in motion, they're going to run out to him and throw the ball to him. And therefore, you got the rushes coming up field, and the trap play was an excellent call. Particularly when that back in motion is Alfred Rawls. <laughs> Yeah, when he goes out wide, they usually roll to him and look for him. 9.28 remaining, third quarter. Tim Brando, Vince Dooley, happy you joined us. It's a border rivalry in the Southeastern Conference, Kentucky and Tennessee. And on third and one, the Rawls may be stopped shy of the first down. No, I think he made it with second effort. That was tremendous second effort by Rawls. That last lunge... They have picked up the necessary yardage for him. Daryl Hardy, number 87, the sophomore from Cincinnati, made the stop. Now, they don't like the mark, do they? They're going to measure. The Kentucky staff is very upset with where the officials mark the football. Well, that's always the key, and the officials have got to get in there and be on the ball when that happens. I think he made it, though. Oh, but it is so close. Yeah. Perhaps closer than Jerry Claiborne might have liked. <laughs> Well, you give all of this credit to Rawls because he was certainly stopped behind the line of scrimmage, popped in there, stopped right here, and then kept grinding, hit right here, and then watch this second effort here. Yeah. He goes for the first down. First and He ten. was hit uh, extremely hard by Daryl Hardy, number 87. Here he goes again. Rawls down to the 36-yard line of Kentucky. Sean Walker again, number 45, making the tackle. Look at the numbers on Rawls. That's almost like the Tony Dorsett statistic you saw with the Dallas Cowboys <laughs> years ago. 100 yards, they win. 111 yards when they win. All six, they win. And the four losses, he's cut in half. Look at those averages. When he wins, 6.1. When he loses, 2.8. That tells you a lot. And, of course, Tennessee felt that they could stop Rawls if their de defensive scheme was the type that would stop him, or at least contain him. They've contained Maggard. He's down at the 35-yard line. May have gotten back to the line of scrimmage or perhaps picked up a yard. I think Dotson he, again made the stop. I think he did, and by picking up a yard, it still gets him in pretty good shape now in the 35-yard line, basically in a four-down zone, and they've got, they've got uh, two downs to make the four yards or three and a half yards. Again, what's at stake? Kentucky now knowing that Indiana's lost, perhaps thinking about the Freedom Bowl, Trying to make an impression. Tennessee wants a share of the title. And they're headed to the Cotton Bowl. And they want that share of the SEC championship. Up the middle, Murray, the fullback, only a couple of yards. And it will be fourth down and three. Well, they go back to the trap. But Murray just made a bad cut. He really had to cut to the outside. He went inside and missed it. If you're wondering again why Tennessee has a feeling about a tie and an SEC championship, it could be a tri-championship if Auburn were to knock off Alabama next week. And that game, of course, at Jordan-Hare. Jerry Claiborne is calling for a timeout. He yeah. wants to discuss what the fourth down call might be. It's fourth and two, halfway through quarter number three in Lexington. 
ESPN's College Football Saturday. Tennessee and Kentucky are brought to you by the exciting, innovative, unconventional new spirit of Dodge. And by Gillette and the Gillette Acro Plus Shaving System and Gillette Foaming. Together, the best a man can get. Fourth down and two for Kentucky. The ball at the 34 of Tennessee with Vince Dooley on Tim Brando. And I will believe that they're going to maybe throw the football. I don't know. No. Oh, Rawls gets goodness. away. But he's still trapped back at the 40-yard line. Daryl Hardy chasing him down. Well, that's an interesting call and a fourth and two by the Wildcats. Historically, Kentucky has run the sweep on short yardage. But look at Mark Moore, number 74. He's been the most consistent defensive player. He bumps him out of there and gives everybody an opportunity to chase him. Here he comes. You could question the call, but look at Moore. He didn't even give anybody a chance. Forced him deep, and now the speed of the Tennessee defense got it. Now Webb. Chuck Webb out of bounds at the Kentucky 49-yard line. And Rawls being tended to on the sidelines. He'll get a number of carries in the second half. He should remain in good health if Kentucky is to have an opportunity here. Well, that may go down as the play of the game right mm -hmm. there. That call. He never had a chance. So what a job Moore did on that play. Well, you, the interesting part about that, what makes it a controversial decision, I believe, Vince, is that it was an east-to-west position that Rawls had to run in before he could turn it back upfield, not going straight up the never, middle. Never had a chance. Down, anyway. you got to be able to turn the corner, and he could have made it. And I've seen Kentucky run that on fourth down, a third down, and two, and make it a lot of times, but there's been a tendency for them to do that. Yeah. And Johnny Majors and staff were right on top of it. First and ten. Webb gets a couple of yards, and that's all. Tony Massey again coming up to make the stop. Look at that. Chuck Webb for Tennessee, 131 yards, and Rawls with 59. But remember this, Webb has carried the ball five more times, and he's the guy that normally doesn't get the long yardage, and Rawls is. So what's happened is Tennessee has at least contained Alfred Rawls, and that's what the coaching staff for Tennessee wanted to accomplish tonight. Well, they had to hold him under 100 yards. I think that's the key. Kelly, again, plenty of time. Now he runs out of there and is down at the 43-yard line, flushed out of the pocket by Jerry Bell, the sophomore from Louisville, number 98. Well, obviously, ex ex excellent coverage uh, in the secondary. And uh, the Kelly is not a good scrambler, obviously, because this is where you need to take off, and he runs right into Mazlinski, number 50, which slows him down from making any real positive yards. Sterling Hinton, of course, who started the season at quarterback, has a great deal of mobility. That's Amsler, the safety valve in that pattern, and he's out of bounds inside the Kentucky 30-yard line. Craig Benzinger made the stop for the Wildcats. Kentucky leading this one 10-9. Five and a half remaining here in the third quarter. Volunteers still with Vanderbilt left on their schedule. Providing they get a victory here today and some help from Auburn, they would have a share of the Southeastern Conference Championship. We're at Commonwealth Stadium here in Lexington, Kentucky. Uh, the key is uh, Kentucky's defense to be able to hold because Tennessee does get stronger as they go along with that great offensive line popping on you down after down. Quick drop. Now the adjustment. Harper deep. Pickens, oh. I beg your pardon, the intended receiver. And one more time, the pass just a bit overthrown in the corner of the end zone. Remember, Harper had three that were caught that were just on the end line. I think what Kelly was going to do there is come up and quickly read the outside blitz, which started to come, and it didn't come, so Pickens just took off on a, on a streak route, and Kelly let him have it, but it was too long, of course. Second and ten. Straight drop, and they flare it out to Amsler. Boy, this place worked a lot here in the third quarter, hasn't it? 
Inside the 20, down to the 19, Joey Couch making the tackle. They've set up that screen well to Amsler here in the third, Vince. Well, they want to get the ball to Amsler because he's a good runner and a good receiver. And here he is now breaking back inside. Just an excellent job of going for the first down. Here he is. They come off of him. He gets the first down. And Amsler had 121 yards last year as the tailback against Kentucky. First and 10 at the Kentucky 19. Just shy of the 15-yard line. Ron Robinson again coming up from the free safety spot to force Webb down. Well, Kentucky continues to fight it and fight it hard because this guy right here, as the game goes on, he almost grabbed uh, Brady. But watch Robinson come in from the free safety position and make the tackle under Webb. You got to tackle him low. Second down and seven. Chuck Webb, nothing doing. And this is where the Kentucky defense has stiffened. In the first half, Tennessee started drives at the Kentucky 48, at the Kentucky 38. They came up with only three points. They've already been denied here in the second half. Well, here's the eight-man front of Kentucky coming in. Hauser does a good job forcing him back inside. And then he gets uh, good help from Benzinger, number 44, the linebacker. Kentucky is tough, you're right, to put it in the end zone inside the 30-yard line. And this is where Tennessee has really been great all season, but they haven't done it tonight yet against Kentucky. Ninth play of the drive, third and six. Woods is open. He's got him. First down, Volunteers. Just away from Tony Massey, and again, that little out pattern towards the sideline. This one a bit deeper off the sprint out action. Well, Woods is the clutch receiver, and this is what makes Tennessee a little more versatile. He goes down, and he knows where that down marker is for the first down, and he slides back inside and holds. And the ball is put right there by Kelly, and you got a first down. Yeah, and Kelly likes that pattern, too, doesn't he? First and goal. Down to the one-yard line goes Tony Thompson. Just into the game for Chuck Webb, just shy of the end zone. Jerry Bell, number 98, coming over from the other side of the field, made the stop. Well, you got to have help at tailback when you run this kind of an offense. And Thompson has come in and done a good job, and he does a good job there of getting below those shoulders and going for the goal line. And you see the reason he's in. They're taping up Webb on that ankle. Thompson reminds you a bit of Johnny Jones back there. They go with a full house look. Yeah, that's the old wishbone. No, no signal. No signal. And Kelly stops shy of the end zone. Boy, it's interesting how many teams are running the wishbone around the goal line in short yardage. Joe Paterno's gone to it. Penn State, and they were Notre successful Dame. again today. No yeah, for Dame. I tell you why, because it's balanced. It's completely balanced, and you've got to balance up defensively, which means offensively you can go either way. And that's why it's so good. Inside the 20, look at that. Only three field goals. Will they be denied again? Thompson, touchdown, Tennessee. Still number 79 and Davis number 78. And then those big old backs, Poles and Amsler. And that'll give you an opportunity to go in the goal line like Thompson did. And the junior from Lake Wells, Florida, did okay while Webb was being wrapped up. And they'll go for two here. They try to make it a seven-point difference. It's now 15 to 10. And he's checking off. Option. He keeps it, and he gets it. 
Oh, Johnny goes to the option here, and he checked off into the play. Well, that's what makes Kelly such an outstanding quarterback because as a young sophomore, he's very intelligent, and he read that and checked off right to the option, and it had a huge hole. There he is right there. Huge hole. Nobody took the quarterback. And the volunteers finally get to sing some Rocky Top because of the backup. Here's the two-point play option and watch the pulling guard right there number 79 still and makes the block on the linebacker which also puts him in hit Swanson nice cut block on Swanson number 84 and Kelly who is not an option quarterback just sort of steps right on in because of a huge hole excellent call by Kelly checking off at the yeah. line of scrimmage and they do not audibilize Tennessee as much as they once did back when they had Alan Cockrell you'll recall the fine baseball player also quarterback for Tennessee they used to check off 50 percent of the time but no longer in this offense well you can do it too much you can really you you can really hurt yourself by doing it you're looking at scores from the NBA and of course Sports Center will update that later tonight with all the facts and figures Kurt Johnson takes off with the kick and is just shy of the 30-yard line at the 29. Now, let's take a look at this. Watch the block by the right half back on the end, Massey. That's number 47, Amsler, and that really does the job. We see the surge of the offensive line, but you've got to have those blocks by the back in order to spring him loose, and in this case, Thompson goes over the top for the touchdown. And that's what the wishbone is all about, is to get additional blocking from the backs. <laughs> what's up? Tony Thompson's what's up, and he got a touchdown. We have a marker down. On the receiving team, on the return, it's a 15-yard penalty and first and 10. And how many times do you see that, Vince? The team's got control of the game, then they give up a touchdown, fall behind for the first time, and then on the kickoff return, they commit a clip, and they start in terrible field position. Well, they've had a lot of penalties, and it really hurts them. Rawls now gets his chance. First and 10, Kentucky. And they put Alfred in motion. <laughs> Murray, the fullback, is popped after about a yard pickup, and that is all. And Tennessee is pretty pumped up right now. Boy, that was a great hit by Fields. Barnett Fields, number 23. Knox made the carry rather than Andy Murray. Mike Knox is the fullback now in this series. Now they're bringing him out of the game. I and mean, uh, Ernest Fields, number 23. He is a great little player, a little short guy, 5'10", 233, but just a sophomore, but a heavy hitter. Second and nine after the gain of one. Incomplete. Intended for Bilberry. Darren Bilberry, number 29, has thrown in the flat, and it'll be third and nine. There's Darren. Kentucky is in need of at least one first down, even though we still have plenty of time remaining. Because you touched on it, they need to control the football in the second half. Well, a team like Tennessee gets stronger as the ball game goes on. And right now, it's important that Kentucky eat some clock. Maggard to throw, and he's down. 74, Mark Moore. And now Tennessee figures to get the ball on the plus side of the playing field. They'll be punting the ball from the end zone now. Well, Mark Moore, who's been the most consistent defensive lineman, number 74 on the left of your screen, they made a little X cross, and he comes back. Nobody touches him. And he crossed with Hobby. Against the wind, Bill Hawk to punt from his end zone. And here comes the pressure. Daryl Hardy nearly blocked it. And it goes out of bounds at the 28-yard line of Kentucky. Just a 20-yard punt. And the Volunteers, with the wind behind them, have the momentum to go along with it. We'll be back. Live on ESPN. Of Maui to the cool of snow skiing. We've got it all for you here on ESPN. Mike Gorman, Billy Raftery standing by in Maui for the Maui Classic immediately following our game. First and 10, Tennessee here. And Thompson, who carried for the touchdown, in for Webb again down at the 22 yard line. Craig Benzinger made the stop. 
Well, we touched on the wind being a factor. It certainly was. And you see Mark Moore, who made the sack to force Kentucky to punt from their end zone. That wind played a major role in that 18-yard punt. It now gives Tennessee yet another opportunity to put points on the board. Well, Kentucky will have the win in the fourth quarter, but they need to play great defense right here and keep Tennessee out of the end zone. Play action. Kelly for Harper. Touchdown! Some athlete, athlete, and uh, all day long Kelly's been trying to throw to Harper, and most of the time out of the end zone. But here, right down the middle, and look at that great reach that he's got. Long arms, long legs, excellent target, and can he jump? Doesn't need to right here. Well, the fourth time's a charm. <laughs> he had three that he caught. All were on the end line, but the fourth time it counts, and it's now 25 to 10. 34 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Take a look at it again, Timmy. An excellent job by Kelly. Good play action fake right here. And then right down the middle, splitting the linebackers. Right where the safety man was. Nobody around him. Those long arms, what a reach this guy's got. Led the conference and won, won the SEC high jump 7.2 feet, two and a half feet, and a half inch. And that score, if you look at some of the other scores from the Division I AA playoffs and Eric Russell on his way, the score we gave you a moment ago was incorrect. There was a two-point conversion a few moments ago, but that made it 17 to 10. It is actually a 24 to 10 game rather than 25 to 10. So we were in error, and we have now corrected that. Kurt Johnson takes it on the sidelines and comes back upfield, up to the 30-yard line. <laughs> 28 seconds remaining here in the third quarter, and Tennessee making good use of their opportunities in field position here in the second half, and they needed to, what with this wind advantage that they have, that they will relinquish to Jerry Claiborne and company in the fourth quarter. A marker down again. And remember, they had the ball at the 30-yard line, were penalized for a clip, took them back to the 15. Then they gave up the sack, had to punt from their end zone, and the quick drive for Tennessee gave them their two-touchdown lead. The receiving team of the illegal formation penalties decline and be first down. I've never seen an illegal formation by a receiving team on a kick, but then again, I haven't been around this long. Perhaps this may be you. You may no, have seen one. I can't uh, say that I have an illegal formation unless they were over the line, which could be what we're talking about. That's Rawls up to the 33-yard line, and that should just about do it for the third quarter. Daryl Hardy made the tackle. Well, they'll have the win now in the fourth quarter, and they'll need it because now they're going to have to throw the ball more and more, but they're going to have to throw on different terms than what they were throwing in the first half. Mm -hmm. The third quarter was good news for Tennessee. They were happy to get that two-touchdown lead, trailing by one at the end of halftime. Harper's got them pointing to the top. 15 points in the third quarter have overtaken Kentucky 24 to 10 with Vince Dooley. I'm Tim Brando. All in the latter part of the third quarter. Second down and seven as we start the fourth for Kentucky. They have the wind at their back. Set up the screen. Thomas finally grabs it and gets six yards before the volunteers snow him under. And Hardy was the first to get there, number 87 and had some help from David Bennett and Keith Denson. When you look at the total yards for Tennessee and Kentucky and the problem for the Wildcats, they need more yardage on the ground than they're getting. And Tennessee now is picking it. It's up, but look here at the passing. And that's the versatility that the Tennessee offense now has with their quarterback, Kelly. Well, the adjustments made by Johnny Majors in the overall scheme of things from week six a year ago also transcends to adjustments made during a game, and he's made several of them tonight. Let's Maggard down. 
by virtue of the blitz. And the backside pressure was intense. Strong safety. Kelly Days came, came off the corner. And that's, that's taking them all, Tim. That's about eight people off the line, which means they were playing strictly man. Here he is from the strong safety position. Mays, Maggard never saw him. And that's the first time they'd run that blitz in this ball game. And Hawk will punt it away, and Woods drops back deep. Fourth and 13. A little longer punt this time with the aid of the wind. And Woods brings it back to the 38-yard line. So Tennessee gets eight yards on the return after the 45-yard punt. Freshman from Germantown, Tennessee, being carried off apparently his knee, and we'll try to update you on his status as soon as we get word from the Tennessee bench. 13-27 remaining in the game. The Vols with a two-touchdown lead as they open up at their own 37-yard line. Pickens is in. He's looking for him. Pass is underthrown, and it'll be second down and 10 coming up. The turning point? Don't think there's any question about the turning point, Tim, because Kentucky had an excellent drive in the uh, third quarter. And as you know, on the fourth and two, Kentucky decided to go wide, mm -hmm. and what a great play Tennessee made to stop Rawls. And that was the turning point. We'll see it maybe a little later on. <laughs> Second and ten. Amsler, he has caught a number of passes in the flat that have been successful for the Volunteers. Right on cue, there it is. 7.07 in the third quarter. Kentucky already leading by a point. And here there comes Rawls. There comes Rawls, and there comes Mark Moore, who forced Rawls deep and allowed all that Tennessee speed to finally catch him, along with Daryl Hardy, the outside linebacker who can really run. He's a 4-5-40, and that's great speed for a linebacker. Tennessee leading by 24 to 10. With Vince Dooley, I'm Tim Brando. Third and five. Again, they dump it out to Amsler, but the Wildcats are ready and waiting. Billy Swanson and Doug Hauser get there to combine on the tackle. And that will force a punt formation for Tennessee, and Kentucky will get it back. Doug Cowles is a very enthusiastic uh, player, and he's a senior, been around a good while, and has played a lot of good football for Kentucky. Kent Elmore will punt it away. A couple of punts tonight, and dropping back deep for the Wildcats. Number 20, Chris Tober. They need a good return out of him. He's averaging 13.3. He's 10th in the nation, and he needs to make something happen right now in order to get Kentucky going. He had a 58-yarder for a touchdown against Cincinnati, but he won't get a chance this time. And look at that bounce. <laughs> Down at the five-yard line. And even with the win, that's a long way to go. A 51-yard punt against the win by Kent Elmore. Now, the kicking game does mean a lot if you're going to win championships, doesn't it? ESPN's College Football Saturday, Tennessee versus Kentucky, is brought to you by BMW, the ultimate driving machine. To arrange a thorough test drive, simply phone your nearest BMW dealer. By the Hartford, the insurance people of ITT. When you need us most, we're at our best. And by Anheuser-Busch, we brew our fine quality beers to be enjoyed responsibly. Remember, no win to say win. 11.40 remaining. The Wildcats with 95 yards in front of them, down by two touchdowns. And the reason Kentucky is backed up is this fella right here, Kent Elmore, who led the SEC in punting last year with 44 yards a kick. And this one, he gets off 51 yards that goes all the way to the five-yard line. And what a kick. Here it is. What a Tennessee bounce. Hit on the three and bounce back to the five. And look at that excitement. And what a kick. And remember, when Kentucky was backed up, they got an 18-yarder off that led to a Tennessee touchdown against that same wind. And now Maggard throws one in the dirt intended for Phil Logan. 
Well, Maggard uh, just had an excellent first half, but right now with the ball game shifted, Tennessee having the upper hand, then Kentucky is forced to do things, whereas before they were using a more of a balanced offense, mm -hmm. play action on first down, running plays, and here now they're being forced into throwing almost every time, and that's not a good situation. And that is a patchwork offensive line in front of him that has to give him the adequate pass protection in throwing situations and now we have a marker down and it might be that inexperienced offensive line that's guilty of premature movement. Well you're talking about patchwork you're exactly right because I don't know of any team that's lost as many linemen offensive linemen as uh, well, the ball was Kentucky there, had a has. Ball start. Go, go for a Under the lineman, half the distance. However Pfeiffer number 75 is experienced and he looked like he was the one that made that mistake there. And they have made had some injuries guys they've had some injuries and what a tough luck for Jerry Claiborne great football coach and a great person third and 13 now in the end zone he's in trouble and he throws it away intended for Bobby Henderson the reserve tight end number 81 so Kentucky with all of those injuries Randy Holler in the linebacker Billy Swanson had to come in from him for him this year he's played well. Brian Crowley, Crowley, Nord, uh, Perry, the left guard. Of course, that's defense. Mazella, who uh, has come back. A lot of them have come back, but Mike uh, Meese, the tight end, has not come back. Though they've had good replacement at there. It's in the offensive line, the interior offensive line, where they've had a tough time. Punt a bit end over end, and Pickens starts at his 48. Marker down. Pickens is down at the Kentucky 30-yard line. 49-yard punt with a 21-yard return, but again, a marker down, so they'll probably bring this one back. Tony Zygman made the tackle. In lieu of the comment made about the injuries, I think it should be pointed up that those injuries come at a time in their schedule when those three top 10 teams in the SEC are having to be played. Auburn, Alabama, <laughs> Right. And now by the receiving team on the return, 15 you know, uh, spot. Uh, this picking still amazes me. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, Johnny Major says he's the best natural athlete he's ever coached. And I mean it's pure natural uh, sandlot type mm. football. He can just get out right in the middle, move a guy to safety man and let him be real at home is just amazing. Four to ten, Tennessee leading Kentucky. 11:05 remaining fourth quarter. I'm Tim Brando with Vince Dooley. The Volunteers open up at their 42-yard line. They're in the running set with the two tight ends. Thompson oh. is hammered by Oliver Barnett, and he hammered himself. He hit him so hard. Wow. Yeah, the left elbow it appears is hurt. Oh, look at that ham hock. Mm. That arm. Back uh, ought to be hurt a little bit yeah. too. Tony Thompson is hanging in there though. Chuck Webb went out of the game, you'll recall. Thompson has played every down since, including one down that was a touchdown. Well, Tennessee has gotten into there too tight, which means they're going to take the ball and run at him. But this guy, Barnett, when he wants to, and look at this right here, came in, hit him with that mm. arm. Holy smoke. And I don't know, maybe he rolled over on his other arm. Mm -hmm. They had an outside blitz and with Massey coming and Barnett. And he rolls over. Mm. Now look all this like a pinched nerve. Yeah. And it may have been as he rolled over because it was the right arm that was extended that got around Thompson's helmet. Well, he's holding the right, but he's moving to left. The career sack leader at Kentucky. He'll get a bit, a bit of a blow now on second and 11. Kentucky coming with an extra defensive back and one less down lineman. Draw. Thompson has perhaps another first down. Excellent call considering the defensive alignment as Craig Benzinger made the stop. Now take a look and listen at this hit, the impact of it. You can hear it up here. Here comes Massey, but here comes Barnett. Woo. Oh. Barnett is quick. Boy, how quick he is. What, what Tennessee wants to do right now is control the football. Run the clock. As we update some scores from the NBA, 
Highlights on SportsCenter coming up later tonight. Now, I want to get your comment. We're a few minutes away from that Miami-Notre Dame game. What do you think about it? I've said since the beginning of the year that Notre Dame's toughest challenge would be Miami down there, and I still believe it. And I do believe that Miami is good enough defensively and can throw the ball, and because of that, I think they'll upset Notre Dame. On first down, Thompson off the left side for a couple of yards. Swanson and Brady combine, along with Jerry Bell. And boy, what how that would change the national scope of things. They talked about it earlier today on College Game Day, Bob Carpenter and Lee and, and Bino. And it really would. Miami now suddenly could be playing Alabama for the national championship in the Sugar Bowl if they were to knock off Notre Dame tonight. Well, it would. <laughs> Change, shake up a lot of the. If Notre Dame wins this ball game, you'd have to say Rice, Heisman, and Notre Dame another national mm -hmm. championship. Second and eight. And the play fake. And Morgan is deep. And so too is Thompson. It's incomplete, intended for Tony Thompson. Well, he wanted to go to Morgan, but he wisely didn't throw the football because. Kentucky safety man Robinson was dead in the middle. He would have thrown it up into double coverage. And again, that's what makes Kelly and he, a good quarterback, and he's going to get better as he gets more experience. Boy, he really is. 15 of 32 for 196 yards. And think about this. All the while, Sterling Hinton's over there on the sidelines. 7-1 and one as a starter himself. He, <laughs> he's a heck of a quarterback himself, but an excellent option quarterback, but doesn't have the passing ability of a Kelly, and that's the difference. Third and eight, draw again, Thompson again, down to the 32-yard line of Kentucky, Swanson again, chasing him down from behind, the junior from Paducah, Kentucky, who has played well for Randy Holleran after that knee injury. Well, it's good to have another tailback, here's Thompson, but look at the holes now. He's getting good blocking. I mean, that's a great hole right there, and that's what makes good backs. Makes good backs great backs. Makes average backs good backs. Mm -hmm. Amsler, the fullback now, in front of Thompson. Oh, Webb is back in. Well, his first carry since he left the game a few moments ago. He left the game early in the third, and then Thompson got the touchdown, and Tony Massey comes up to make the stop. I think uh, Webb is not 100% right now. We saw him working on his ankle and in his run right there. He didn't look like the uh, the Chuck Webb of uh, of earlier in this ball game. And he should be getting stronger. A great back normally does, but his ankle is hurting him. Second and six. They're showing blitz. And Webb is stopped by Swanson again at the line of scrimmage. Joey Couch also coming through. Number 48. He actually grabbed him by the ankles and got him down. Nice story today on College Game Day by Kerry Ross on Chuck Webb and what he has overcome to be a great running back at Tennessee. And statistically, it's meant a lot to Tennessee to have him in the football game. I saw him in this spring game, and I thought he was an excellent back. And that's why I felt like even though losing, they would have done well with him. Well, they call Reggie Jackson Mr. October. I guess Johnny Majors is Mr. November in college football. Well, he's had a sensational, splendid record during the month of November. The old saying, they remember what you do in November. And that's one of the reasons that Johnny is remembered very well, because he has done so well in November. But on the other hand, he hasn't had quite a demanding schedule in November as he does earlier in October. I think you may be being kind again. You may be. <laughs> and we'll tell you why in a minute. Over the middle. It's Pickens down to the 25-yard line. And yet another Tennessee first down. Billy Swanson making the stop. Well, Pickens, now what does he do? He catches balls, he intercepts balls, he returns punts, mm -hmm. he does kickoffs. 
does it all. Just a complete player. You just put him out there and say play. The reason we say that uh, the schedule may not be quite as demanding, Tennessee historically plays Mississippi, Vanderbilt, and Kentucky in the conference in November, and then usually a non-conference doormat. This that, year it was Akron. And again, majors once a time. They <laughs> can't get the quarterback's attention. Ambler. Oh, nice play. And one more time, he's shut down. Billy Swanson coming up to make the stop. Uh, Swanson's maybe, down. Yeah, Swanson's down. He may have the ball. What a, what a play. Swanson has just played splendid football tonight, and he may have gotten hurt. He was in a bad position as he threw his body up there to make that tackle. And Ron Robinson came away with it. So Swanson made the hit, caused the turnover, and you see he's getting up gingerly. I think he really hurt his back because he was in a bad position. Watch him try to come up. Watch oh. that back bend. Oh, say it. Yeah, it, uh, uh, that hurt him. Hurt me. What a tackle, but oh, he bent him over. When you tackle that guy, Amsler, he's a big man at 6'2", 230. Not many gymnasts, even Bart Connor, have done that with their spine. <laughs> Here's Amsler taking the football and watch Swanson right here hit him, but wow, he bends his back. There goes the ball. What a tackle, but what a back bend. Here's a, another, oh, excellent hit, but look at it back. And what's amazing is that he gets up and he's running off the field. Now, he's got to be in excellent condition to do that, but he's hurting. There's no question that he's hurting with trying to hit a big back like Amsler. Credit to the flexibility and, of course, the work, the off-season conditioning. All of that comes into play there, doesn't You've it? You've got to be conditioned to play this game. First and ten. And down goes Maggard. Really nowhere to go. Just a sea of orange around him. Kelly was there. Todd Kelly, number 58. The freshman from Hamden and James Wilson also in on the pile. And you see the score by quarters. Tennessee with a 15 to nothing shutout in the third quarter as Kentucky goes to the hurry up on second and 16. Intercepted. Sean Walker has the touchdown. Seventeen yards on the interception return, and the Volunteers now are thinking Cotton, and maybe even Sugar. Well, that's an uh, outside possibility. The Sugar Bowl does have a representative here. Elliot Laudeman, I talked to him earlier, and uh, he said that uh, that's still a possibility if, if Auburn were to beat Alabama soundly. Tennessee is able to put in fresh people. When you've got the ball game under control, you can put in fresh people, and they can rush the passer, which they did. Now Maggard's a little shake threw the ball out there in the flat, and Sean Walker just picks it off. He's a sophomore out of College Park, Georgia, and just runs right in for the touchdown. Maggard's had such a sensational first half, and there's Johnny. He's <laughs> he's smile. He's all smile. Go, Johnny, go. I was with him last <laughs> night, and he was all smile. He felt good earlier, but that first half, he didn't feel too good. He is a survivor. <laughs> Boy, they had him all the way out of Knoxville when they were 0-6 last, last year. And, I think you had the great term for him when we spoke earlier well, today. Well, Johnny's crusty. I mean, he is <laughs> tough. He's been through some tough situations. Been in the coaching profession a long time. He's been through a lot of those kind of conditions. And he's been able to make some tough decisions to turn the program around. And that's exactly what he did this past year. Right in the middle of the season, 0 and 6, 0 and 5, or 6 rather. And then came back with an excellent finish in November. Five straight wins. And the up back gets the kick, and Kentucky will take over at the 26. Speaking of Johnny Majors, in 56, he was an All-American tailback in the single wing for the Volunteers. He finished as the Heisman runner-up to Paul Horning and led the balls to a 10-0 regular season record. 
And the 31-yard run here over Kentucky in his three-year career. Majors had 2,700 yards in total offense. By the way, Kentucky had a lineman that year by the name of Lou Michaels. Went on to play for the Baltimore Colts. Broughton in the game, and his pass is incomplete. In so, fact, when Johnny Majors, his senior year, when he had such a great year, that was my first year mm -hmm. of coaching, and I remember scouting Johnny, and he was one great tailback. And, of course, that was one of the very controversial Heisman years because Horning was on a losing Notre Dame team. That was a five and six club that the Irish had, and yet Majors had a 10-0 record at Tennessee and couldn't come up with it. Well, Johnny went into the Hall of Fame last year as a player, and I'm sure he will one day uh, as a coach. Chuck Broughton in the game at quarterback number 14. Heaves one again deep. And it's batted into the air. J.J. McCluskey again over there to knock it down. Broughton out of Ashland, Kentucky, a senior, 6'4", 230-pounder. And this will be his last opportunity to play for the Big Blue. Played, played a lot last year. Did some good things. You see his numbers this year. Not bad. Largely in mop-up time. But going back to that, about the Heisman, the voting in the Heisman has changed since the days when Majors was a candidate. Well, you publicize them more. You send out every week something about the Heisman. Even send videos, which is what they did. On third and ten, another drop pass. This one to Kurt Johnson. And it'll be fourth down. The Wildcats will be forced to punt it away. Pickens will stay in the game as Broughton comes to the sideline. Bill Hawk will punt it away. And again, Tennessee should get good field position with 5.55 remaining. High spiraling punt coming to Pickens at the 30. And he's out of bounds. At the 47-yard line. Possession-wise, the Wildcats have had some difficulty in getting started. In the second half, five plays, interception, then they go down on downs, and that critical fourth down play came in that second possession when they gave it up. Well, they had a nice drive, nice drive going, and that was indeed the biggest biggest play of the football mm -hmm. game. And then when they started at their own six, they had to give it up, and then, of course, the interception coming once down by two touchdowns. But field position has been a problem throughout for UK. Got another fullback in there, and that's the thing when you've got fresh players. That's McCroskey, Clemens McCroskey. Number 35 popping through there for a healthy gain and a first down. A pickup of 12 on the play. Webb is now taking time out to sit along with Tony Thompson. A job well done, and we'll see some of the backups the rest of the way. Now here's Thompson. Thompson gets down to the 41-yard line. A pickup of two, and it'll be second down and eight. Jeff Brady coming up to make the stop for Kentucky. Brady, who has had a tremendous game and season when you consider some of the defensive problems Kentucky's had on the injury side, has helped out at that linebacking spot. Well, Kentucky is a gallant football team, always has been a gallant football team, and despite the problems that they have, they'll fight you down to the wire. And again, McCroskey, look at this. Down to the 20-yard line. I'd say they have a wealth of depth at that running back spot. Brad Armstead, along with Oliver Barnett, make the tackle a 21-yard gain for McCroskey. And you bring in fresh people, and it does make a difference. Kentucky obviously is tired, and uh, when you bring somebody in fresh like that, it uh, really, really shows up. McCroskey out of Shelbysville, Tennessee. Just a freshman. And he gets it again. Gets a couple of yards. Sterling Hinton is in at quarterback in this series for Tennessee. Number 16 out of Passaic, New Jersey, the junior. As we mentioned, seven and one as a starter. And they say, Vince, that, that the entire staff, that Sterling has handled the demotion as well as one would ever ask. 
Well, they really bragged on him. Johnny was talking. Johnny Majors was talking about him uh, last night, and uh, they said a little, a lot of good things about him being a team man, wanting to help the football. And it's tough when you're a quarterback. You want to play, and to be replaced, it's tough. Johnny, incidentally, is going to be the next president of the American Football Coaches Association, and I mentioned that Jerry Claiborn is a past president, so we've had some real two fine leaders in the coaching profession. Second down and 20. 4-13 in county. Left in the ball game. Draw. Boy, it's worked so well. This time, McCroskey is stopped at the 32-yard line. Jeff Brady, uh, who's been a very consistent football player, made the tackle. You see the Orange Bowl matchup, our probable matchups, Notre Dame, Colorado, Alabama, Miami. Again, a lot can be determined tonight in that Notre Dame game as to which will be for the national title. The Fiesta Bowl, two years ago, it was Florida State and Nebraska. It will be again. And Florida State may have an argument to number one if, in fact, Miami were to go all the way to the national championship. They got some ifs hanging, right? Yeah. I don't believe with two losses they wouldn't really have much of an argument, although they did beat Miami earlier this year on ESPN. Quarterback draw, and there's the running ability of Sterling Hinton. And, of course, the Cotton Bowl and the Rose Bowl apparently set with Tennessee to take on Arkansas, provided the Hogs beat SMU, and they handle Texas A&M by a point, and you'll see the Aggies and the Longhorns next week. Vince and I'll be there. In the Rose Bowl, Michigan, the third-ranked team in the country to take on USC as they defeated the Buckeyes today, 28-18. to And Texas, by the way, also lost earlier this afternoon, so they are now mathematically out of the Cotton Bowl picture. Henson, Henson is a great running quarterback. Randy option against UCLA for the touchdown. They have a big win over there. On fourth and three, McCroskey has stopped. So Kentucky will get the ball back. And as for the bowls you'll be seeing on ESPN, we've got some dandies. The Holiday Bowl, where you and I will be in San Diego. BYU tied Detmer, the leading passer in the country against Penn State. Contrasting styles there. Penn State defense, BYU offense. The Mazda Gator Bowl, West Virginia. Major Harris, a Heisman hopeful against Clemson. The Tigers have only lost twice. Duke, the Blue Devils, to take on Texas Tech. I believe Spike Dykes' Red Raiders may be one of the unsung teams in all of college football. Not many people know about the team from Lubbock. You'll get to see them from Birmingham on ESPN. Those games coming up the 29th and the 30th and the 31st. Timeout called by Tennessee. And the Volunteers lead by three touchdowns with 2.02 remaining. Hey, Roy, there. 31 to 10, our score, Tennessee leading. It is now fourth down and seven. The scoreboard was incorrect a few moments ago. And they will go for it, and they will be into first down territory again. Tony Thompson. Down to the 10-yard line, Brad Armstead made the tackle. <laughs> Andy Kelly is the top gun. All the folks in the hills of Tennessee can be proud. Tony Thompson has really played well in the second half of this ball game, replacing Chuck Webb, who, who has been handicapped with the ankle in the second half. You see the total yards, Tennessee in the second half, all over Kentucky. Well, that's been the trait of Tennessee because of this great offensive line. And they are superb. We've got a marker down. They're big, as we talked about the offensive line, and they're quick. And I mentioned they're intelligent. The Mac Ray, for instance, is a physics major. Is the swallow ball was dead, a delay of game on the offense. Mazlinski, number 50, is a pre-med major. And uh, Eric Still is, uh, will be an academic All-American. He's international business. He's not only an academic All-American, but he's also a Kodak All-American, a Walter Camp Foundation All-American. That's what you call your basic red, white, and blue All-American. I think he's going to make all of them. He's going to be a consensus for sure. First down. Hinton keeps it on the option. He just wants the clock to run down. Well, the Kentucky Wildcats will have their first winning season in a while. They'll go six and five. And they have reason to be proud of their defense, 
because of this man. Billy Swanson, our rude player of the game for Kentucky. Just a scintillating performance, saving touchdowns with batted down passes and many, many tackles throughout the course of the afternoon and evening. And for Tennessee, not much doubt, the top gun, Andy Kelly, 16 of 33, 210 yards and the touchdown. McCroskey, a couple of yards, and that's all, and that should just about do it. McCroskey on the carry for Tennessee. Eugene McClellan, the freshman from Cincinnati, made the stop as time ticks down. Well, Johnny Majors hasn't been able to beat Bill Curry. That's been the knock on him up in Knoxville. Now he's hoping Pat Dye can keep his streak alive against Bill Curry and give him a share of the Southeastern Conference title. Tennessee will have Vanderbilt next week, and one would think they'll have that share if, in fact, the Auburn Tigers can beat Alabama, but that's a big if with the kind of team Bill Curry has this year down in Tuscaloosa. That'll do it for Vince Dooley. I'm Tim Brando saying so long from Lexington, Kentucky. Our final score.